Szanowni Państwo, Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Polish Physicists Association, I am thrilled to welcome you to the 46th Extraordinary Assembly of Polish Physical Society, which marks a 100th anniversary of the Polish Physical Society that was established 11th April 1920 in this very beautiful place we are in, that is the Physics Department, also University of Technology. The 100th anniversary is celebrated by the Senate of Poland. The Senate pronounced the year of physics in Poland in 2020. This is the physics year. This is a pretty exciting year because of the coronavirus pandemics. The originally planned assembly was postponed from April towards uh, 16th, 18th, October 2020. Coronavirus pandemic is not winning out, it's becoming more intense. Therefore, this is a hybrid convention. We observe regulations in the auditorium of the physics department we cannot host more than 50 people. Other people, like 400 participants, are using the YouTube platform. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to all the delegates and distinguished guests. I'd like to welcome our guests. First and foremost, I'd like to welcome Professor Grzegorz Wrochna and the Secretary of State in the Ministry of uh, Science and Higher Education, his magnificent Professor Krzysztof Zaremba, also University Rector, we don't have the Deputy President of Polish Academy of Sciences with us. At least I cannot see the gentleman. He might be joining us later on. Welcome to Professor Zygmunt Lala, Deputy Rector of the University of Warsaw. Professor Mirosław Karpierz, Deputy Rector of Warsaw University of Technology. I cannot see the representative of the third department of the Polish Academy of Sciences, Professor Roman Mitznas. He might be with us in the online group of participants. Island. Welcome. I'm really thrilled to welcome representatives of Polish and international societies and organizations. Petra uh, Rudolf, the president of a Polish Physical Society, who's joined us online. Katarina Langlas, the president of the French Physical Society. Lutz Schreter, the president of the German Society of Physics. Jonathan Flint, the president of uh, Physics Institute from Great Britain, from United Kingdom. Jeno Soliom, Hungarian uh, society president. Dmitry Mogilievce, the Belarus Physical Society. All the people whose names are mentioned are online. Stephanie Schlung, Science on Stage Europe President. Professor Jacek Miękis, the President of Polish Mathematical Society. He's promised to be with us, but his plans was, were thwarted, and he's joining us online. Professor Marek Sarna, Polish Association of Astronomers, he's with us. Guy Wormser, the president elect of the French Physical Society. Ink Yerkao, deputy president of uh, Taiwan Physical Society. Dominique Harley, 
from the Institute of Physics, United Kingdom. Barta van Tigelen. Barty van Tigelen, the editor in chief of EPL Journal. And on top of that, I'd like to welcome Professor Katarzyna Hawasiska Matsutov. Starting yesterday, the honorary, the first honorary president of the Polish Physical Society and the president of the Polish Physical Society 2014 2017 types of office. Professor Wiesław Kamiński, the president of the Polish Physical Society 2010-2013. Hello to Professor Reinhold Kules, the president of the Polish Physical Society 2006-2009. His online participant, he was unable to join us. Professor Maciek Kolbas, the president of the Polish Physical Society 2002-2005 and the president of the European Physical Society 2009-2011. Professor Henryk Szymczak, the president of the Polish Physical Society 1993-1997, the professor is with us in the online meeting room. Professor Stefan Pokorski, the president of the Physical Society, 1993. Oh, here's the professor. Hello and welcome. And with us, we've got the representative of the industrial applications, Dr. Robert Wilinski. I believe he is with us. He promised to be with us. He is the director of the University Technology Transfer Unit at Warsaw University. If he's not with us offline, hello and welcome online. Hello to the host of this assembly, Professor Dariusz Wasik, the dean of the physics department at Warsaw, University of Warsaw, Dr. Wojciech Wrubel, Professor of Warsaw University of Technology, the Dean of the Department of Physics at this university, and Roman Puzniak, Acting Director of the Department of Physics at Polish Academy of Sciences. These were the words of welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, the guests of honor will address the participants of the assembly. The first person to speak is Minister Grzegorz Wrochna. Ladies and gentlemen, the Senate of the Republic of Poland upon the resolution to establish 2020 the year of physics uh, to mark a uh, 100th anniversary of the establishment of the Physical Society wish to underscore the achievements of Polish uh, physicists for the international science and the development of the Polish physics after regaining independence in 1918. I have been uh, pushed for personal reflections. In 1920 it was reminded by the Senate that PTF started, it was transferred from the Physical Society that was originally initiated in 1919. In this very building, this is the building of the Physics Department of the University, Technological University of Warsaw. Awesome. In 1921, the Physics Department at Warsaw University was open. Uh, open. It was Hoja 69th Street. 69 years later, in 1981, I started studying at that department. I do remember because it was the martial law and um, student strike, I was uh, learning how to program with the perforated cards. I had a pleasure to listen to Professor Pniewski's introduction to physics um, lectures. I still remember one of the questions uh, that I was 
ask at the examination, when do we have the reflection uh, uh, switched left right, uh, not uh, upside down in the mirror? It was a banal question, what to do? Um, but it was algebra of uh, vectors, uh, transpolation of uh, uh, this um, setting. Uh, it was a beautiful illustration of the beauty of the physics. Uh, the beauty of the material world is uh, ruled by the rules of physics. Some banal phenomena like the reflection of um, trees in uh, water upside down, the sunset, and similar ones uh, amaze us with the beauty. And the beauty is even more demonstrated when we ask ourselves questions, why does that happen? The answer is in the physics. And this is the quest for the deeper meaning of the beauty. This is what the physicians do. I'm always amazed with the wealth of material world, uh, the clouds, streams, flowers, uh, rugs, and even our bodies are made of three basic building elements of the matter, uh, neutrons, protons, and photons. And, uh, that make it possible to uh, savor it. Late Professor Janusz Zakrzewski was really mm, amazing. I uh, had PhD in elementary elements, uh, supervised by Professor Zublewski. The second day after the defense, I left for sand. I was at Professor Kolikowski's division. I was looking for some other building blocks that are required to build the world, although they exist for nanoseconds. Higgs elements that were awarded with the Nobel Prize. Uh, it is worth remembering I think, because we very often uh, dream to have a Paul winning the Nobel Prize in physics, but we did not notice that the Polish seems to be a part of uh, three ones. Professor Higgs was, after CERN experiments, confirmed the existence of these elements. And there was a Polish team that was an active participant of the experiments. In 2015, the Nobel Prize was uh, awarded for ne neutral oscillation, and the gravitation waves uh, the next one big research teams with a great contribution of Polish physicists in them. The three Nobel Prizes indicate the beauty of the physics, but also the second phase of it, practical utilization. The experiments that have been mentioned required implementation and development of new technologies without a shade of doubt. They change our life. The internet, HTTP and HTML language were created at CERN for the benefit of the experiments. These are the physicists that created a gravity theory, me, uh, quantum mechanics, and they opened the ways to numerous uses. Uh, we owe them GPS, computers, and smartphones. In the pandemics area, we can recognize the fact that we have the possibility to get in touch with people at large distances, as if face to face. We watch 8D and uh, 4K wonders of the world. Without leaving uh, the home, we listen to the greatest virtuoso. Th these are the virtuosos of uh, equations and experiments. Uh, this is the physicist whose years uh, yeah, we are celebrating at the moment. Dziękuję bardzo. Thank you very much indeed. I can see that we have the Deputy President of the Polish Academy of Sciences, Mr. Paweł Owiński. Hello and welcome. And the Dean of the Third Department, Mr. Roman Mitznas. And his magnificence, Professor Krzysztof Zaremba, the Rector of Warsaw University of Technology. The floor is yours, sir. Hello and welcome everybody. I'd like to thank her for inviting me to this meeting. Being the rector of this university, I often take part in kind of meetings and I pronounce uh, similar words. I'm so happy to be here that we host this, that I'm honored and thrilled. Never before have I done it so convinced as I am today. Allow me for a few personal remarks. I will explain why. 44 years ago, I uh, came into this university. I was torn between physics and electronics, two fascinations. Both fascinations come from a great master of mine and friend, Professor Marek Golka. I believe this is the factor that brings us together with minister. He was amazing at teaching uh, physicists that were more resistant. I was not the most 
most resistant one. Therefore, I was facing this choice. I opted for electronics because the passion of creation was the winning one, but I always craved for physics. It was not that bad. My educational path followed this way, that I landed at nuclear electronics department that was into ionizing uh, detectors. So we returned to the physics without giving up on electronics. In 1989, I was able to go to CERN, and I have been a part of it until now. Together with my team, we have been a part in different CERN experiments, neutrine experiments, and the fascinating T2K to Menakanda that was mentioned by the minister. Takaki Kajita was the Nobel Prize winner. As a former professional life, and the contact with the two lovers of my life has always been so fascinating. As Confucius said, I've never worked in my life because I've been dealing with the things that I am in love with. It is a great pleasure to be a part of this uh, great ceremony on the 100th anniversary of this institution that represents physics and the request to finish off. If for today, if you could uh, take me as an honorary physicist, I'd be more than happy to have this title. Ladies and gentlemen, and now the floor goes to Deputy President of the Polish Academy of Sciences, Professor Paweł Rowiński. Allow me to take off the mask, Mr. President, Minister, ladies and gentlemen, having listened to the Rector's presentation, it is difficult to say how happy I am to be a part of this ceremony. I am thrilled to celebrate the centenary of Poland's physics because Poland's physics deserves the utmost respect. I'm probably the only non-physician. I'm into geophysics, so in a part, my heart belongs to physics. Ladies and gentlemen, associations of the Polish uh, Physical Society with the Polish Academy of Sciences are rich and diverse. Not only do the institutions have to meet, very often these are very personal bonds. Uh, the Physical Society members are the members of the Polish Academy of Sciences, or the Physics Department, directors of institutes, or the employees of the institutes of the Polish Academy of Sciences. So the bonds are pretty natural. Allow me to say, that I wish to see another centenary because this centenary that is the, that we are celebrating at the moment uh, has been amazing. I've got uh, the letter the credentials that go to the president on behalf of the chapter of the medal of the Polish Academy of Sciences to bestow the Polish Physical Society with the medal of merit for extensive achievements related to the social role of science. This is the certificate. There is a special engraving that marks the centenary of uh, Poland's Polish Physical Society. And I wish to reverberate my words of congratulations. We are thrilled to have been able to cooperate with you. Thank you very much indeed.
Dziękuję bardzo. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much for your wishes. We may proceed with foreign societies representatives. We've got recordings that will be put on the screen. First person to speak, uh, Petra Rudolf, the president of the European Physical Society. Second, Professor Dr. Katarin Langlas from the French Physical Physical Society. The third person to speak, Lutz Schreter from Germany, and Jonathan Flint, the president of the Institute of Physics from Great Britain. Let's listen dear to Polish dear physicists, Polish. dear friends. Dear friend. In the name of the European, of Physical, the European Society, Physical Society, I would like to bring you, like the, to warmest bring you the warmest congratulations on your 100 years of existence of the Polish Physical Society. Uh, we are all uh, celebrating with you because physics in Europe would be unthinkable without the Polish contributions. And uh, I'm very happy to see that many of them on the strong fields where Poland contributes will be highlighted in this conference. The Polish Physical Society has also made very important contributions to the European Physical Society ever since it joined in 1972. You have very actively contributed to the divisions and groups, uh, to Europhysics conferences, and you have organized the general meeting of the EPS in Warsaw in 2011. Very important was, of course, having a Polish president of the uh, European Physical Society. Maciek Kolvas has been uh, the president from 2009 to 2011, and he has uh, introduced important new things in the European Physical Society. For example, the uh, summits between Asia, Asia Pacific and European Physical Societies. The first summit took place in 2010 in Tsukuba, the second one in 2011 in Warsaw, and since then these summits have taken place regularly. The next one will hopefully be in Manchester next year. What also is very important, which started during the presidency of uh, Professor Kolvash, are the Young Minds sections, which unite locally physics students PhD students and postdocs, and through which we uh, try to um, <clears throat> improve their leadership qualities, uh, to uh, make them meet all through Europe, and uh, to encourage them to do outreach actions uh, to promote uh, physics among the general public. There are three very active sections in Poland, two in Warsaw, one at the Technical University and one called Warsaw Optics at the University of Warsaw, and one in Wrocław. And I would be very happy if the occasion of this celebration would be also the moment to start other young mind sections, uh, for example, in Gdansk or in Lodz or in other places. Um, <clears throat> Another thing which is very important is the historic sites of the European Physical Society. There are right now two in Poland uh, that are, uh, have been recognized. The Hosa 69, where many uh, Polish physicists were educated, and the Kleist Palace, but I can think of other places in Poland that certainly deserve celebration for their uh, physics discoveries. So I hope new uh, places will be inaugurated soon. I uh, also want to mention uh, the physics teachers in Poland. Uh, this is a very active and enthusiastic group, which I had the chance to meet at the Physics on Stage in Geneva nearly 20 years ago. But last year, when I was here for your last conference and for the informal physics society meeting, I could see that this tradition in innovation uh, continues with much enthusiasm, and I want to congratulate you for that. Again, I want to mention that I'm very sorry that I'm not there to celebrate with you, and I wish you a wonderful conference and celebration. Best regards. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, the Senate of the Republic of Poland designated 2020 as the Year of Physics 
to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Polish Physical Society. On behalf of all members of the French Physical Society, I would like to congratulate you for this anniversary and the recognition of the fundamental contribution of Polish physicists since regaining independence in 1918. Poland and France benefit from many scientific collaborations. In fact, exactly 100 years ago, the French Physical Society, together with Maurice Kodoska Curie and other notable scientists, created the company named Le Journal de la Physique et le Radium, the Journal de Physique being one of the predecessors of the European Physical Journal. At the time, Marie Curie, who is very dear to my heart as a role model for many female scientists, initiated French police cooperation and scientist exchange in nuclear physics, greatly enlarged in the 70s to include particle physics and applications. It stimulated discoveries in the field and led to hundreds of common publications. In fact, I must confess that when I prepared this video with my colleagues, I was impressed by the number of joint actions we had in the last 100 years. I cannot name them all. In the recent past, some have been supported by the Polonium Exchange Programme, the joint initiative of our respective countries, or the Harmonia Programme, of your National Science Centre. The collaboration copain ganil on physics of exotic nuclei, COBICAL, should also be mentioned. All these programmes provided opportunities for exchange of students. But I also heard of many successful exchanges of French researchers, especially from Lyon and Grenoble, with the Polish Academy of Science in Warsaw and in Wrocław, and with Young, young, sorry about that, University in Krakow on cold atoms, on wave propagation, on nanocrystals, and on spin physics in semiconductors. Exactly one year ago, we had the privilege of a visit of Professor Lesek Circo to her headquarters in Paris. We discovered that our learned societies have a very similar structure, a comparable size, and the same type of activities. We share common priorities and both of us pay special attention to young minds and outreach. You have an impressive teacher section with active involvement of teachers on high school that could be an inspiration for us. In fact, I do hope that we will be able in the future to initiate a joint action as you attribute prestigious prizes to foreign researchers that played an important role for Polish physics, we might think in the future of a common prize. It could be the opportunity to celebrate our long lasting relationships that beyond excellent scientific contacts also generated many friendships. I wish you a very happy anniversary un très bon anniversaire, and would like to take this opportunity to invite you in Paris in 2023, when the French Physical Society celebrates its 150th anniversary. Have a great Congress. Dear President Leszek, uh, dear members and guests of the Polish uh, Physical Society, on behalf of the German Physical Society, DPG, and also personally, I would like to congratulate the Polish Physical Society on its 100th birthday in 2020. Congratulations. I'm also very pleased that the Senate of uh, the Republic of Poland has established the year 2020 as the year of physics. The celebration of the 100th anniversary in the uh, year of physics cannot be overestimated. They strengthen the positive perception of physics in the public and give the great opportunity to offer non-physicists an insight into uh, the exciting world of physics to experience and share the fascination of physics. Almost all phenomena uh, we, uh, we encounter in everyday life are based on physical laws. They not only lay the foundation of our civilization, but also shape our worldview. Education, especially physical education, allows us to understand the interrelationships in 
order to combine the diversity of nature and society into a harmonious worldview. Education is not only specialized knowledge. It provides a necessary orientation to distinguish facts from fallacies and legitimate prognosis from esoteric promises of salvation. Physics education also contributes uh, significantly to personality development, which also means that the career opportunities for physicists are very broad. They range from teaching, research and development to business, politics or journalism. Uh, the knowledge they gain in physics is also needed in order to master the upcoming social challenges, whether in technology or economics, in the conservation uh, of resources or in coping with climate uh, change. Because of its fundamental importance for understanding our world, physics as a science has uh, a special responsibility for our society and culture, for tolerance and integration, and not least, uh, for the respect uh, uh, for science and its results. Uh, the DPG therefore considers itself very fortunate uh, to have the Polish Physical Society at its side, a sister society that is fully committed to the perception and appreciation of physics. I would like to mention this in uh, only three short examples. Uh, in a recognition of outstanding contribution in pure or applied physics, the Polish Physical Society and the DPG jointly award the Marian Smolokowski Emil Warburg Prize in memory of uh, the work of Marian uh, uh, Smolokowski in Poland and Emil Warburg in Germany. The prize was established with the help of the Maya Viol Foundation and it's uh, uh, awarded every two years alternately to a physicist who lives in and works in uh, Poland and uh, Germany. A second, uh, in order to set a visible sign of the importance of cooperation across borders and for the European team spirit, B National Wilhelm and Else Herreus Seminars are being organized in the Physikzentrum Bad Honnef with Poland, France, and England uh, with the financial support of the Wilhelm and Else Herreus Foundation. These seminars, uh, which last uh, several days, are intended to strengthen uh, contribution to scientific encounters on a European level. And third, in order to strengthen and further develop the so-called House of Europe, uh, our uh, physical societies have, of course, also worked together for many years uh, in the European Physical Society EPS. The fact is, society needs physics because physics is in everything and everywhere, in the history of the universe, the structure of matter, but also in modern communication technologies and uh, or uh, advanced methods of uh, medicine. In a nutshell, physics education helps to orientate oneself in the world and is, uh, to distinguish facts from fake. Now it uh, only uh, remains for me to say on behalf of the DPG on occasion of the 100th uh, anniversary of the Polish Physical Society in the year of physics in Poland, at Moltos Anos, and we wish the 46th Extraordinary Congress of Polish Physicists a great success. Many greetings uh, from Germany. Bye bye. Hello. I'm Jonathan Flint, the president of the Institute of Physics. On behalf of everyone at the IOP, I would like to wish the Polish Physical Society a happy 100th year anniversary. This is a great landmark in the history of your society, and I'd like to pay tribute to the contribution which the Polish Physical Society and Polish physicists have made to our discipline. The IOP is also celebrating its 100th year anniversary this year, so we share much in common. Polish physicists have been making invaluable contributions for a long time, from Copernicus to Curie. The Polish Physical Society was created in April 1920 in Warsaw and had its first national meeting in 1923. It became a member of the European Physical Society in 1972. Yours is a remarkable history, which has seen many advances in physics over the past hundred years. In the 1920s, Edwin Hubble expanded our knowledge of the universe beyond the Milky Way. Paul Dirac published the first of his papers on the quantum theory of the electron. And Cockcroft and Walton built the first particle accelerator. 
The following decade saw Sir James Chadwick discover the neutron, pivotal in paving the way for the discovery of nuclear fusion. After the end of World War II, we saw the first ever PET scanners built and Sputnik 1 was launched, beginning an era of space exploration and space applications that continues today. In 1972, Charles Bolton gave us irrefutable evidence of the existence of black holes, the formation of which provided the subject of this year's Nobel Prize in Physics. The mid-90s gave us the discovery of the first planets beyond our solar system and the knowledge that the expansion of our universe is increasing. In 2012, CERN scientists from the Large Hadron Collider discovered a new particle, later confirmed as the Higgs boson. Within each of these examples is the crucial presence of collaboration. My own country's continued relationships in Europe are crucial and perhaps more important now than ever. And we, as a group of European physical societies, must continue to work together for the advancement of physics. Congratulations again on the 100 year anniversary of the Polish Physical Society. And we look forward to the research and discoveries of the next century. Thank you. particularly important now in the time of uh, Brexit. So uh, let's hope that uh, our fruitful cooperation is going to last and flourish. Now I would like to invite the president of the Polish Society of Astronomy, Professor Marek Sarna, to deliver his address. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the astronomers associated in the Polish Society of Astronomy, I would like to congratulate you on 100th anniversary and I would like to thank you for many years of our cooperation. The Polish Physical Society brings together the people interested in research and studies on the universal laws related to matter and energy. Your discoveries, which may not be understood by many, translate onto very practical aspects of our lives. At the same time, you encourage young people to discover more, to note the laws and the will to touch the subtle structures of the universe. Recently, we have seen a, a remarkable trend of extending the research database from micro to macro. We now deal with different aspects of cosmology. There is a complete synergy between our research. Let us remind uh, of the common uh, achievements, such as os oscillation of neutrinos, detection of uh, gravity gravitational waves, exoplanets, black holes versus the predictions of the relative uh, theory, uh, the theory of uh, relativity. From the practical point of view uh, of our society's operations in 2018, the action of uh, saving astronomy as a branch of sciences owing to the support of the authorities of the Polish Physical Society has ended up in a success. I am very pleased that I am able to thank for it on the important day of your centennial anniversary. On behalf of the Polish Society of Astronomy, I would like to wish you endless passion and fascinating discoveries. And personally, uh, I would like to say that uh, uh, recently, we celebrated 100th anniversary of the Society of Mathematics. Now, uh, the physicians celebrated. In three years' time, the astronomers will do the same. 
There is a beautiful logic in this uh, cycle. Astronomers uh, will be the last ones to celebrate 100th anniversary. Uh, and now I would like to uh, invite you to celebrate it with us in three years' time. Thank you. Thank you very much for your speech, for your nice address. The Polish Physical Society received a letter of congratulations from the president of the capital city of Warsaw, Rafał Trzaskowski, and now I would like to read this letter to you. Ladies and gentlemen professors, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, Congress of the Polish uh, physicists uh, celebrating uh, centennial anniversary of the Polish Physical society which brings together distinguished uh, representatives of uh, uh, science who contributed a lot to the achievements of science. That is why the year 2020 is the year of physics. Me as the mayor of the capital city of Poland decided to, um, to grant my honorary patronage over uh, this meeting. Uh, due to pandemic I am forced to limit my personal presence uh, in uh, such a meeting meetings, which I'm particularly sorry about. Although I am not able to participate in person, I would like to wish you fruitful discussions and many scientific successes in the future. The 100 years of uh, uh, achievements of the society uh, um, leave us in hope that uh, there will be more successes to come. I keep my fingers crossed for the part organized for the youngest ones uh, that will take place on the third day. That will be the database of experiments which can encourage interest in physics for students. There is nothing more important than to inspire and um, kindle the interest of the youngest ones. Let me wish you fruitful discussions. Once again, congratulations on your impressive uh, achievements and uh, I hope you are going to reach even further to the benefit of our science and our future. Your achievements mean changes in our everyday life. Uh, yours sincerely, Rafał Trzaskowski. Thank you very much. We also do have a letter from uh, Professor Jacek Miękisz, uh, the president of the Polish Mathematical Society. The professor was supposed to be with us, but unfortunately, due to health reasons, he uh, didn't make it to us. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a year ago, we celebrated centennial anniversary of the Polish Mathematical Society. Uh, mathematicians met uh, in Krakow in, uh, and established uh, a Polish Mathematical Association, which later turned into Polish Mathematical Society. We uh, then discovered that the Polish mathematics uh, became a part of the global mathematical aid. In, was it incidental or uh, an inevitable in result? Um, which we owe to the independent Poland. The concept of, uh, the, of the mathematicians' operations in Lviv, which were concentrated on the basis of mathematics, the theory of ma multiplicity and topology. Mathematics in Poland is a wide branch. There are many interdisciplinary areas. The current president of the Polish Mathematical Society is a physicist by education, so we we have to find the answer to the question how contemporary science can find its strong position uh, among the global leaders. We mathematicians hope to develop our cooperation with physicists in this difficult time. Let me wish you a lot of successes this year and in the years to come. Let me wish you fruitful discussions as well. Jacek Miankis, the president of the Polish Mathematical Society. Thank you very much for this letter. And we also do have an address from the president of the Belarusian um, Physical uh, Society, where Dmitry Mogilevcev wishes 
All the best to the Polish Physical Society, um, further development and active participation in the scientific life uh, of uh, the Polish and global milieus. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, after the official part, let us move on to the part devoted to granting the awards of the Polish Physical Society for 2020. We are going to start with special uh, awards. Uh, there are two uh, of them uh, equivalent, granted by the uh, board of the Polish Physical Society to Wojciech Nawrocik and Andrzej Kajetan Wróblewski. So first, uh, uh, the award will be granted to Wojciech Nawrocik and then to uh, Mr. Wróblewski. Unfortunately, they are not able to participate in uh, person. Uh, we hoped that uh, Andrzej Kajetan Wróblewski could make it, but unfortunately, he is not with us. So let's start with Professor Wojciech Nawrocik. This is the special award of the Polish Physical Society for distinguished achievements in uh, popularization of physics and for international undertakings aimed to popularize nat natural sciences in Poland. The laudatio uh, on uh, Professor Wojciech Nawrocik's uh, operation will be delivered by Stephanie Schlunk. We have a video and the award will be collected by Professor Henryk Drozdowski on behalf of Professor Wojciech Nawrocik. My name is Stephanie Schlunk and I'm the chair of Science on Stage Europe. Science on Stage is the biggest STEM teaching initiative reaching 100,000 teachers in over 30 countries. First of all, I would like to congratulate the Polish Physical Society for the 100th anniversary. Happy birthday. When Maria Dobrowska called me a couple of weeks ago and asked me for this greeting, I did not have to think. Of course, I said yes. Wojciech Nawrocik really deserves this prize, this special prize of the Polish Physical Society. He is the one who started in the year 2000 physics on stage in Poland. He was in charge of selecting the best Polish physics teachers for the international physics on stage conferences. He offered Polish physics teachers the chance to present their excellent teaching ideas on a European level and that allowed the, those teachers to bring back ideas seen at the festival to Polish classes. Wojciech and his team, the so-called National Steering Committee, did organize the selection process in 2000 for the festival in CERN in 2002 and also 2003. When the initiative was open to all STEM teachers and called Science on Stage, Wojciech and his team were still there. In preparation of this international festival, Wojciech did organize national physics on stage festivals in Poland. And I attended one of those festivals a couple of years ago and I really enjoyed it. It was a great atmosphere. Wojciech was not only involved in the organization of the physics and science on stage festivals, but also in the development of the non-profit association Science on Stage Europe. When the financial support from the European Commission ended in the year 2007, Wojciech contributed with his ideas and thoughts 
how to establish and found a non-profit association, what we did in 2011. And I have really excellent memories about 2011 and the first festival organized by two countries in Srubice, Frankfurt, Oder, the festival 2013. Wojciech and I spent many hours in meetings to prepare this festival. And at the end, it was a huge success. Once again, I would like to thank Wojciech for his support for this festival, first time organized by two countries. And Wojciech is also a great man in bringing together teachers and researchers. With his connection to the Adam Jekiewicz University and the Polish physics teaching community, he offered teachers in Poland to get insights from physics research. And we all know, if you want to inspire students, you need to inspire teachers. I really would like to congratulate Wojciech for this prize. And I hope that we see each other again soon I send you my very warm regards, stay healthy and see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you very much Stefania. And, uh... On behalf of Professor Nawrocik, it will be presented to Professor Henryk Dozdrowski. We will forward it to Professor in Poznań Division. Ladies and gentlemen, and another extraordinary award has been presented to Professor Andrzej Kajetan Wróblewski. For outstanding achievements in making physics popular, the authorship of many breakthrough publications on physics that discover and popularize Polish themes in the history of physics, congratulations. And laudation, laudation will be delivered by Stefan Pokorski, previous president of the Polish Physical Society. The floor is yours. Truly pleased to be able to say a few words about Professor Andrzej Kajatan Wroblewski. The pleasure is even greater because we both represent the same field of science. This is elementary impact physics. We've known each other for almost 60 years. In 1963, the student of the fifth year of physics, I was under the supervision of Grzegorz Białkowski, my scientific supervisor, Andrzej Wróblewski and Ryszard Sobstowski. I looked at them as if they were elderly gentlemen, they turned 30 at that time. So for me, these were the elderly gentlemen, and I have cooperated with CERN, which was a great asset. It was the time of revolutionary changes in fundamental interaction physics. Germany Zweig proposed a quark medal, Björken, the famous scaling. CERN was also on the verge of the formulation of the standard model of uh, 
elementary interactions. CERN delivered outstanding amounts of experimental data. Polish groups, the one supervised by Wróblewski and Sosnowski, were the most recognized cooperators of CERN. Shortly after, Andrzej became famous with his formulation of a very simple law that systematized a great array of data that we received from CERN, but not only multi-element production law in hadron collision process. It was the springboard to create theoretical models and theoretical descriptions of the reactions. Why can, one can say that was the beginning. It was an active, multifaceted activity of Andrzej that benefited the development of physics and Polish science. And I believe, I wish to stress, that there was a special fascination that I have had with him for many years. He is into history of physics. Andrzej has had outstanding achievements. We need to have a big sheet of paper to quote it. Being my age, you need to have a sheet of paper to support you. I don't want to speak at length, but introduction to physics that was written together with Janusz Zakrzewski, a fascinating book on the history of physics. He disseminated uh, physics that resulted in books on dispelling myths in physics and anecdotes on scientists. Not only were these the researchers in making this popular, but political uh, politics uh, with relation to science was being shaped because he's been an active member of the Polish Academy of Sciences, Polish Academy of Capabilities. He's been the president of for many years, the dean of the physics department, rector of Warsaw University, the member of uh, the National Qualifying Committee and many other organizations. He's been the one to formulate the categorization for scientific units principle based on parametric indices. Andrzej is also the laureate of numerous awards. Smoluchowski's Medal of Polish Physical Society, the Prime Minister Medal, honorary doctorship from five universities or so. The list is pretty extensive. There is no point in going into details. Andrzej, if you can hear me, please accept my sincere congratulations. May you have this kind of energy as you have had. May it continue for many years. Thank you very much. I wish to reverberate my congratulations to Professor Andrzej Kajetan Wroblewski on this wonderful distinction. The diploma will be sent to Professor.
Proszę Państwa, następne nagrody będą miały charakter naukowy. Other awards are of scientific nature. These are bestowed by the Polish Physical Society, Polish Society of Physics, bestowed by the chapter headed by Professor Wiesław Kamiński. So the chapter president will be the one to present the accolades. The scientific award of the Polish Physical Society for achievements of Polish scientists over the five-year period. The chapter bestows the award for to Professor Dr. Dak. Dariusz Kaczorowski for outstanding contribution into discovery of topologically protected non-trivial electronic states in semi-metallic modeled materials. Congratulations on behalf of the chapter and Professor Jonas. Aha, to nie potwierdził. Profesor has not confirmed his physical presence in the meeting. Polskie Towarzystwo Fizyczne od wielu lat także honoruje swoją nagrodę naukową najlepsze prace doktorskie, które są wykonane w ciągu ostatniego roku. Tym razem kapituła tego nagrodę przyznała doktor inżynier Krzysztof Ptaszyński z Instytutu Molekularnego Fizyki w Poznaniu pod tytułem Nierównowagowa fizyka statystyczna układów kropek kwantowych. Quantum dots, fluctuation, current fluctuations and thermodynamics of information flow. I zapraszamy pana doktora. Doktor Jonas. Polskie Towarzystwo Fizyczne także wyróżnia młodych Polish Association also recognizes the young and juvenile adapts of physics recognizing MSC thesis over the last year. Arkadiusza Piekary Award. One is presented to Master of Science Engineer Michał Barreja from Applied Physics and ICT at AGH University of Technology. Particles production with 200 giga electronovolts energy in injured constituents. Zapraszamy bardzo serdecznie. Tak, ten gest Unii Europejskiej This European Union gesture. jest powszechny. This is quite omnipresent. W tym roku mieliśmy bardzo 
publiczną grupę zgłoszeń do magisterskich of MA thesis applications and the chapter welcomed very high substantive level. Therefore, we resolve to present distinction for MA thesis Ms. Maximiliana Środa, Środa, Wrocław Technical University. Spin transport in disordered Hubbard chains with broken SU2 symmetry. Congratulations. Is this lady with us? Gratulujemy. Jeszcze drugie wyróżnienie, także za pracę magisterską, otrzymuje Magister Aleksandra Magister Aleksandra Protka, Physics Department of Warsaw University, Exeter Dynamics measured by Sodium Pump Method in Semiconductors, the Halkogens of Metals, Transition Metals. Aleksandra jest z nami. Is Aleksandra with us? Tym niemniej serdecznie. Nonetheless, we wish to congratulate. Dziękuję bardzo. Tak, chyba tak. Dziękuję bardzo. Ladies and gentlemen, now we will present accolades for teachers of physics. The president of the chapter is Piotr Kosacki. Professor Kosacki is not with us, therefore, present the accolades. Polish Physical Society First Level uh, Grzegorz Białkowski Award for Outstanding Physics Teacher and the Medal of Grzegorz Białkowski for 2020 Achievement goes to MSC Engineer for his active participation in Szczecin, innovative methods of work, and triggering the interest in physics. Congratulations. Zapraszamy. Proszę bardzo i medal. The award, uh, the second grade award for the, of the Polish Physical Society for teachers is granted to Anna Bukiewicz Scholl from the secondary school number 17 in Wrocław for discovering students' talents and inspiring the interest in physics, astronomy and technology. Congratulations. Unfortunately, she is not with us, but the diploma and the award will be granted to her. The award of the Polish Physical Society, the third grade award for exceptional teachers, goes to Dla pana, magistra Sławomira Jemielitego. Sławomir Jemielity from the Catholic uh, complex of uh, the Piotr Skarga in Warsaw for innovative teaching methods and inspiring interest in physics as well as distinct as well as special achievements in working with talented students. Congratulations. 
jeszcze raz gratuluję. Congratulations. Proszę Państwa, teraz wyróżnienie Polskiego Towarzystwa. And now the distinction of the Polish Physical Society for 2020 for inżynier Anna Banasik from the first secondary school in Bytom for inspiring students' interest in physics and for exceptional achievements in her work with young people. Congratulations. Do we have Ms. Banasik with us? So the diploma, the distinction, will be presented to her. The distinction of the Polish Physical Society for 2020 was, uh, has been granted to Justyna Bartolboszczyńska from the Youth Center of uh, Sociotherapy, Social Therapy and the Hippolyt Zagielski Complex of Schools in Rogozno for her successes in uh, working with talented young people and for promoting innovative methods of working with young people. Congratulations. The diploma and the award will be granted to her. The distinction of the Polish Physical Society for 2020 has been granted to Mr. Piotr Marynowski, retired teacher from the secondary school number four in Rybin for his exceptional work within innovative uh, teaching methods and dissemination of uh, physics. I can see uh, that the gentleman is with us. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's the time to grant the awards related to dissemination of uh, physics. Uh, the president of uh, the jury is uh, Professor Andrzej Wysmołek, who is with us. Ladies and gentlemen, Working as the jury member is an exceptional distinction, but also hard work because there are lots of people disseminating physics uh, in Poland, so our task was really difficult. Still, we were absolutely sure that Professor Drozdowski deserves this award. The award for dissemination of physics and the Krzysztof Ernst Medal goes to Professor Henryk Drozdowski for his involvement, passion and ability to kindle interest in physical phenomena by his um, activity disseminating physics. Congratulations, Professor. Kapituła ma ten przywilej, że może przyznać dwie nagrody. 
But the privilege of, uh, of the jury, of the chapter, is to grant two awards. Uh, the other award goes uh, to authors of a scientific paper. Now you can disseminate knowledge and make people fascinated in physics using different media, the internet, television, and so on. In this respect, uh, the best candidate uh, was Dariusz Aksamit, who received the award of the Physical Society for his uh, scientific paper published in 2020, and the substantiation is for non-conventional method of knowledge sharing and inspiring imagination through videos and uh, uh, materials which disseminate science and popularize science. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, now we have a number of awards for organizing the meeting of uh, the Polish physicists in Krakow. Unfortunately, I cannot hear the speaker. He is not using the microphone. I'm terribly sorry, but I cannot hear the speaker. The special award for organizing the 45th meeting of the physicists in Krakow 2019 and for development of uh, materials goes to Danuta Gosiagwo. The same award goes to Dr. Roman Skibinski. Uh, Roman Skibinski informed us that he would arrive, but I cannot see him here. And the special award for organizing the 45th meeting of the Polish physicists in Krakow 2019 and for development of uh, uh, materials goes to Professor Józef Spałek. Professor Józef Spałek was uh, the, um, the head of the program comit committee uh, of the meeting of Polish physicists in Krakow 2019. For organizing the meeting and development of uh, materials, uh, the award goes to Dr. Engineer Marcin Zieliński. Congratulations. The same special award goes to Professor Dr. Adam Mai. Congratulations. The special award goes to Professor Roman Planeta. Congratulations. The special award for organizing the 45th meeting of the Polish physicists in Krakow in 2019 and for the development of materials also goes to Professor Piotr Zieliński. Congratulations. And now, ladies and gentlemen, another special award for organizing the 45th meet, for organizing the meeting. Uh, but this time, it is the award for organizing discussions and uh, special meetings. And this award goes to Dagmara Sokołowska. Congratulations. And to Dr. Victor Witold Zawadzki. Congratulations. The, the diplomas will be presented to the winners as soon as possible. 
przy okazji też powiedzieć. Ladies and gentlemen, taking the opportunity, I would like to mention that yesterday we had a special assembly of the delegates of the Polish Physical Society and two resolutions were passed. One is devoted to establishing the medal of the anniversary of the Polish Physical Society. The medal was designed by Wojciech Menzelewski. Let me read the text of this resolution. Otóż, proszę Państwa, the assembly of the delegates of the Polish Physical Society on the occasion of the anniversary celebrating the establishment of the Polish Physical Society declares that uh, the, uh, the provisions uh, established by the founder have been fulfilled. The delegates express their gratitude to all active members of the society for their work towards strengthening the significance of the society in Poland and worldwide. The decision has been made to commemorate the centennial anniversary of the Polish Physical Society with a medal. The delegates accept the design of the medal developed by Wojciech Manzelewski. The medal will be first granted to the participants of the special uh, meeting of the members of the Polish Physical Society. This is the model Władysław Natanson, the first president of the Polish Physical Society. Another resolution was passed, which states that the special meeting of the delegates of the Polish Physical Society on the 15th of October, according to the application of Leszek Sierko, appoints Katarzyna Hołaśnińska Macuk of the former president of the Polish Physical Society to be the honorary president of the Polish Physical Society between 2020 and 2021. Congratulations. Congratulations. So we have the first honorary president of the Polish Physical Society. I would like to share the information about uh, the medals granted uh, on the occasion of the centennial anniversary. The medal uh, was made according to the design by Professor Spawek, and uh, the medals were granted during the meeting of the Polish physicists in Krakow. This is the supplementary part, and now I would like to read a list of uh, the persons who received the medal. The medals uh, granted on the occasion of the centennial anniversary of the Polish Physical Society for the active members of the Polish Physical Society. The Bydgoszcz branch grants the medal to Grażyna Czerniak, Adam Gadomski, Stefan Kruszewski and Beata Pietrewicz. The Białostok branch to Andrzej Maziewski, Krystyna Perzyńska, Krzysztof Szymański and Piotr Zalewski. The Częstochowa branch awards the medals to Ewa Mandowska, Zygmunt and Zygmunt Olesik. The Gdańsk branch grants the award, the medal to Jarosław Rybicki. In Gliwice, the medal was granted to Jerzy Ocenta and Adam Iszczyński. Katowice branch Janusz Gruza, Maciej Maśka, Anata Szczygielska, Andrzej Ślewarski, Urszula Woźniakowska Bezak, Elżbieta Zyper, Wiktor Zyper and Marek Czałek. 
Kielce Brunch, Aldona Kubala Kubuś, and Małgorzata Wysocka Kunisz. Krakow Brunch, Henryk Figiel, Zbigniew Konkor, and Józef Spałek. Lublin Brunch, Mieczysław Budzyński, Dariusz Hocyk, Janusz Felix, and Jerzy Żuk. Łódź Brunch, Stanisław Bednarek, Opole Brunch, Katarzyna Książek, Ireneusz Książek and Ewa Pawelec. Poznań Brunch, Nemadwal goes to Andrzej Czajka, Andrzej Dobek, Henryk Drozdowski, Alina Dudkowiak, Ryszard Naskręcki, Roman Świetlik and Zbigniew Trybuła. Rzeszów Brunch, Marian Cholewa, and, Paweł, and, and Gaweł Żyła. Słupsk, Anna Kamieńska, and Tomasz Wróblewski. Szczecin, Mariusz Dąbrowski, Tadeusz Molenda, and Ewa Weiner Trączka. Toruń, Michał Pawlak, Janusz Szatkowski, Józef Szudy, and Józefina Turło, Wrocław, Ewa Dębowska, Ewa Dobierzewska, Morzynas, Dariusz Krych, Tomasz Kryczyło, Bernard Jancewicz, Adam Kiejna, Adam Pikuła, Wojciech Rudnorudziński, Włodzimierz Salejda, and Dobromiła Szczepaniak. Warsaw, Jacek Baranowski, Bogdan Cichocki, Marek Dudyński, Jerzy Garbarczyk, Jan Grabski, Bogdan Grządkowski, Mirosław Karpiesz, Piotr Kosacki, Ryszard Hudner, Mirosław Łoś, Tomasz Matulewicz, Piotr Rączka, Tadeusz Stacewicz, Zuzanna Suwak, Dariusz Wasik and Andrzej Wysmołek. Zielona Góra, Kaolon Wang, and Lydia Nader Kozdowska. Congratulations on winning the medals. Ladies and gentlemen, we still have much time left, but we'll soon uh, start uh, the <coughs> lecture which was supposed to be delivered by Andrzej Kajetan Wroblewski. But uh, to the best of my knowledge, Professor couldn't make it uh, today. Therefore, now we will have the lecture from the afternoon session. That it will be delivered by Professor Jerzy Garbarczyk from the Warsaw University of Technology, and it will be about the Polish Physical Society in Warsaw. Uh, according to the agenda, uh, this lecture is supposed to be delivered quarter to one, so we'll have around 20 minutes break. But uh, before we finish this part of our celebration, I would like to remind you that the 46th uh, um, Congress of the Polish Physicists will uh, take place uh, in Bydgoszcz uh, next year in September but we still don't know what form it's going to take. Most probably it will be online, uh, but we do hope it's going to be a conventional uh, congress during which we'll have the opportunity to meet face to face. Thank you very much, and uh, we are going to be back here quarter to one to listen to uh, Jerzy Garbarczyk's uh, speech.
lectures. The first lecture was supposed to be Andrzej Kajetan Wróblewski uh, and deliver a speech on the centennial anniversary of the Polish Physical Society. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it to us because of some health problems. So this session will uh, be opened by Professor Jerzy Garbarczyk, who will tell us how the Polish Physical Society was established in Warsaw. The floor is yours. Szanowni goście, obecni w gmachu fizyki Politechniki Warszawskiej. Ladies and gentlemen, dear guests who are present uh, here in this lecture room, dear guests who are watching uh, us online, I have a difficult task to present in brief 100 years of history of the Polish Physical Society in Warsaw, just within a few minutes. It's not an easy task at all, so I will limit uh, the information to some basic facts. More information can be found in the special issues of the progress of uh, physics devoted to 100th anniversary of the Polish Physical Society. That will be a paper authored by me and by uh, the co colleagues who are also going to deliver lectures today. In 1919, in the very heart of Warsaw, in the photo you can see the shabby building of the Warsaw Vienna Railway. I'm going to refer to this place in Warsaw during the story I'm going to tell you. Quite near this place on Koszkowa 75, there is the building of the Department of Physics, Electroengineering of the Warsaw University of Technology, where the Polish Physical Society was established. Before it happened, two months after gaining independence, in Warsaw, in the same building, the Polish Physical Society of Local Nature was established. It was Warsaw Physical Society, chaired by Józef Kowalski Wierusz, a well-known physicist and rector of the Etherberg University in Austria, while Stanisław Kalinowski was the deputy chair. Professor Kowalski Wierusz, since 1916, was the head of the Department of Physics at the University and the Department of Physics at the Warsaw University of Technology. However, since 1919, he was only the head of the department uh, at the Warsaw University of Technology. He did, his term in office was quite short because he chose a different path of career, so uh, Stanisław Kalinowski took over. Stanisław Kalinowski was the rector of the Polish Free Lecture Series. He taught physics uh, uh, in the Wawelberg and Rotwand uh, Technical School. As the head of the department, together with his colleagues, he decided that the society was of uh, local character, so they decided to write a letter to Władysław Natanson requesting him to establish the Polish Physical Society. As we know very well, following some problems related to the fact that there were still uh, um, battles in Lviv, a series of uh, 
incidents resulted in the establishment of the Polish Physical Society. Andrzej Kajetan Wróblewski would definitely be able to tell you more about the details of such establish of this establishment. I'm going to limit my presentation to some brief facts. This is where the establishing meeting took place, this is the exact room and the building of our department. Now I'm going to read uh, the memory of uh, Stefan Pienkowski. He said, I can see, as if it was today, a small laboratory in the Warsaw University of Technology, which was used as a conference room. Professor Nathanson chaired our meeting. The meeting, there were about 20 participants in the meeting, including 18 founding members. We were deeply moved by the fact that we are establishing a Polish society, the Polish society. This is how our society was founded. The branch of the Polish Physical Society in, in Warsaw became the branch of the Polish Physical Society in Warsaw. It happened on the 5th of June 1920. Stanisław Kalinowski was the deputy chair, while Wacław Werner was the chair. The members of the board included Stanisław Landau, who, was, who later changed his name to Ziemecki, Zofia Kowalczewska, Mieczesław Pożaryski, and Witold Pogorzelski. Uh, the first uh, office uh, was in this place where we are now. Wacław Werner studied in uh, several universities uh, all over Europe. He wrote his doctoral thesis at the University in Freiburg. Then he cooperated, he worked for the Institute of Low Temperatures. Uh, but most probably we can say that uh, his, uh, his role was to teach physics. On the 27th of June 1920, a meeting of, uh, of the heads of physical laboratories in Poland took place. You can see the building where it took place in the photo on the left-hand side. It was a magnetic observatory established by Stanisław Kalinowski. And you can also see uh, the Babelberg Rodwand uh, School and X-ray laboratory of the Warsaw Scientific uh, Society. A milestone in the development of the Polish Physical Society was marked by the meeting, by the assembly, which took place in April 1923. The opening and the closing ceremony took place in the lecture room of the Warsaw University of Technology, whereas the lectures were delivered in the new uh, Institute of Experimental Physics on Horsha Street. Konstanty Zakrzewski was the chair of this meeting. It was not the tradition back then that the chair of the meeting would be the president of the local branch of the Polish Physical Society. Na zjeździe dokonano dorobku fizyków polskich z ostatnich lat. The achievements of the physicists was uh, summarized during the meeting. Uh, because of the war, uh, the achievements were not so uh, exceptional and not so significant. Uh, there were 19 lectures delivered. Uh, mainly, they were reports on, on research and on study. Bardzo sympatyczny i 
It was back then when uh, the uh, custom of organizing trips to interesting uh, places was established then. It was uh, the trip to Warsaw Filter Station, which was state-of-the-art institution. There was also a trip to Magnetic Observatory uh, in Świdernie, Warsaw, and to the Transatlantic Station. The activity of the Warsaw branch of the Polish Physical Society uh, was significant in the 1920s. Uh, there were different uh, lectures, presentations, and speeches delivered by uh, foreign guests. Between 1922 and 28, there were 76 uh, lectures delivered, uh, each of them um, in each of them, around 30 people participated. There were also different presentations about uh, popular science. Uh, the attendance was very high, uh, around 200, 350 people. So the auditor auditorium was full. Back in 1927, uh, Paul Langevin visited uh, Warsaw. He delivered speeches on the balance between matter and radiation and modern theory of magnetism. This is the view of the auditorium room of the physics department of the 20s. The Warsaw division was pretty active in the 1930s. Here you've got the poster regarding Mieczysław Volker's presentation on the new elementary uh, parts, neutron, positrons, and neutrino. Look and see how cutting-edge discussions were held at this meeting. It was repeated, requested by many listeners who were unable to join the original session. What comes also interesting, you had to pay a fee to enter PTF members' tickets were 65 grosh, the same for students. So Warsaw Division was trying to be a self-financing institution, judging by the attendance. It was quite successful. What was Warsaw's PTF's stronghold? There were the teachers that belonged to PTF, but also these were academia representatives. There were five of them which had the Department of Physics, mainly Warsaw University and Warsaw University of Technologies, first and foremost. Until 1926, physics was the part of the philosophy department. 2639, Mathematics and Life Sciences Department. There were two divisions, Experimental Department and Theoretical Department, Hoja and Skoczki, respectively. At University of Technology, there was the first physical department at the Electrical uh, Chair and the second at the Chemical. The Warsaw PTF and the National PTF in the 20s and 30s were dominated by three people, Stefan Pinkowski, Stefan Białobrzewski and Mieczysław Wolfka. I need to take a sip of water from time to time because there is lots of content. It's a pretty exciting topic and my throat goes dry. Stefan Pinkowski, he was an outstanding science organizer, the creator of Hoja Street Division. In 1921, the Hoja Street uh, facility was finished. Next year, they are going to celebrate the centenary of this fact. Professor Pienkowski was supervising magnificent students of his, Alexander Japoński, Stepan Szczeniowski, Leonard Sosnowski, Jerzy Pniewski and many, many other. 
What you may find interesting, these splendid physicists have created their own lines of studies and gave rise to other very important personages. So Pinkowski played an important role in experimental physics in Poland. He was a manier rector of Warsaw University, many a president and honorary member of Polish Physical Society. He organized the famous Luminescencia Congress in 1936. He was mainly into luminescence, despite the fact that his scientific interests were much broader. Mieczysław Wolfka is one of the most outstanding Polish physicists in history of science, the precursor of holography. 1920 paper was far from holography because lasers were not known back then. Denis Gabor, 50 years later, felt the obligation to explain this in his Nobel lecture that he had not known Volsker's works. He was also the discoverer of helium form that is present below two kelvins. Ten years later, the phase was identified as quantum uh, liquids devoid of viscosity. Wolska's interests were very broad, which was pretty well recognized. He was the president of PTF at the beginning of the 30s, and he was the chair of the Sixth Assembly in Warsaw. Czesław Białobrzewski, ladies and gentlemen, he was into theoretist, and he became international recognition in the role of pressure for internal coherence of stars, the head of theoretical department of physics in Oczki Street. He was a devoted member of PTF, a multi-annual president and the head of Warsaw Division. In 1938, he organized a congress on new theories in physics. There were Krem de la Krem of physics joining Wigner and many other, Newman among them. In 1932, we witnessed the sixth PTF assembly the second in Warsaw's PTF history. It was organized at Warsaw University of Technology in Grand Auditorium. Normally, they would have visited, we would have visited uh, this big auditorium. It's the pandemic time, so we are pretty limited in our discretion to organize Trips. The inaugural lecture was delivered by Dwojciech Rubinowicz, plenary sessions, Czesław Blawobrzewski, Józef Patkowski, Ludwig Wartenstein, Konstanty Zakrzewski, and Mieczysław Wolfke, who was speaking about physics and technology. The main message of the presentation was be a physicist, work for technology. This idea was picked up by other outstanding Polish physicists, Aleksander Jawoyski and Wacław Dziewulski, and nurtured at consecutive assemblies. Physicists did realize that could be more useful working for the national safety, security and defense. These were the pretty turbulent times, as we know. Professors and senior assistant professors who were attending the assembly paid a visit. President Mościcki an outstanding chemist hosted them. It's worth recollecting that he was an assistant lecturer to Professor Wierusz in Freiburg. There is the whole group of physicists, Czesław Białżewski, Wolska, Natanson, the tall gentleman next to the president. 
był również Stefana Pińkowskiego. Stefan Pińkowski. Także Ludwika Wertensteina. Ludwik Wertenstein on the left hand side. Proszę Państwa, to jest Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very interesting picture. I like it. Nobody would strike the pose for that. That was a small auditorium at Warsaw University of Technology. 88 years ago, that is a moment frozen in the lenses of the camera. I do love the picture. Here, the, there is the list of Warsaw Division presidents in the mid-war period. Some data is missing. At the beginning of the 30s, the Polish Physical Association reports were no longer published because of the economic downturn, and the list is incomplete. At the end of the period, Aleksander Jabłoński chaired the association. He left for Vilnius, where he was appointed professor. Stanislaw Brozowski, who went to the US being an apprentice, and the indefatigable Stanislaw Białobrzewski. List of members in 1937, 115. That was an elite, we must say. <coughs> In 1937, Warsaw Division had uh, secretary, Roman Smoluchowski, the son of Maria. He was a physicist of uh, solid bodies. His PhD was quite innovative. <coughs> Gönningen, the Netherlands University. It's EXAF's method, we can say today. Quite innovative even today. He would work at Warsaw Technical University's Institute that was established by Jan Czokralski. There was the wartime, Roman Smoluchowski was able to break to the Western countries and the USA where he continued his career in some other topics, but it's a story for another day. The story, the history of Poland was different too. The war broke out. The turbulent times of war, this is the name that I have given to it. It was the uprising, the September campaign, uh, fighting in the army. This is what our colleagues are going to say. Many Warsaw physicists never returned to Warsaw. In the place of the old station, there was the central station that was unfinished before the war. It's a symbol because the Second Republic of Poland was not finished. It, its history was discontinued abruptly by the outbreak of the war, the times of the war. Concealed education was on everybody's lips. That uh, theme is pretty well known. There was this concealed clandestine university. Uh, Professor Pienkowski and Białobrzewski's flat was serving as lecture rooms. Physicists offered services like water expertise. The teams repaired electrical motors. There was open teaching. Little do we know about it, but let's not delve into details here, because this is yet another story. PhD thesis were finishing. Professor Sosnowski and Ścisłowski were finishing thesis during the occupation times. Conspiracy activities also thrive. There is a Photoshop here. 
supervised by Wolfke, microfilms were developed. The pictures were taken in Warsaw streets during the Germans' raids to document how brutal the Germans were. Warsaw was bomb shot in 1942 by Russians. Again, little do we know about this. That was the result of Germans' Barbarossa plan. The bomb shelling killed more civilians than Wehrmacht. During one of the bombshells, Professor Józef Patkowski died. Patkowski was optical spectroscopy specialist, an outstanding professor at Vilnius University who came to Warsaw uh, from Vilnius, being a part of the clandestine, clandestine university, and he died in a bombshell action. During one of the bombings, Czesław Białobrzewski's workshops in Oczki Street was destroyed. Białobrzewski was a theorist, but uh, it was water duct company in the city that ordered expertise of that. Uh, Rad was owned by radiology department uh, in Warsaw. The head of it, Ludwig Wertenstein, kept this formulation at home. Poszukiwany przez Niemców, sam musiał się ukrywać przed Niemcami. He was on German's hit list. So he had to keep his uh, profile low. He transferred it to Wacław Werner, who hid it in Brvinov House's cellar, and then transferred it to the Scientific Association. Werner was of German origin, and he was offered to sign the Vox list, but he refused strongly. Wertenstein was trying to get out of Poland. He succeeded in 44. He went to Budapest. Sorry to say, January 45, he died. There was a stray missile or a mine. It's not clear. It was in Budapest during Russian's siege of the city. A horrible drama, Warsaw Uprising. This made an imprint on the cradle of PTF, this very building. The University of Technology was seized by the uh, guerrillas, but in August the Germans uh, attacked uh, the building with the use of the tanks and an air raid, a bomb, was dropped onto the building and an empty shell remained. Ladies and gentlemen, the nightmare of the war came to an end, and Poles were quite enthusiastic in rebuilding the country. This cutting-edge yet unfinished building of the main train station at the corner of Aleje Jerozolimskiej and Marszokowska Street. Our colleagues are staying in the hotel opposite uh, the station. It was demolished. Uh, the station was demolished because the construction could not be rebuilt. Ladies and gentlemen, not only did we speak about the buildings, but also academic structures and physical society structure. There was the consolidation role. Stefan Pinkowski, quite an energetic one, played a very important role. The three consecutive assemblies were organized three years back to back. The first three were the discussion 
Russians that they were assigned the numbers after years. It was number 10 and 11. The 10th, these were the Spartan conditions because uh, the participants were supposed to bring their own blankets and duvet. Mason's, Mason's theory of nuclear powers, experimental and theoretical approach. Nuclear physics in the second one and fission of heavy nuclei was the main topic. We've got the names of physicists who were lecturing at that time. Starting 48, we can speak about reactivation of the Warsaw Division of Warsaw Physical Society. 49, the fourth assembly, it was the solid bodies physics as the light motives. Uh, we've got the names of scientists who are delivering their lectures. All these assemblies were housed in Honja Street Physics Building. As you can see, the building suffered a lot during the war. After the three assemblies, what did we see? New interests of Polish physicists were demonstrated. Less optics, less luminescence, more nuclear physics and more solid body physics. Mieczysław Wolski was not attending the assemblies. In 1946, he was allowed to go west of Europe in order to become familiar with the achievements of technical physics. At the same time, he was offered to lecture in Zurich on low temperature physics. Mieczysław Wolfka was a senior assistant lecturer at that university and Zurich, uh, University, Zurich Technical University. His uh, senior lecturer thesis was also reviewed by uh, Einstein. So Wolfka enjoyed a very strong position in Poland before the Second World War. Well, in 1946, the gentleman exchanged uh, correspondence on multi-quantum emissions, but it's a different story again. When Wolfgang's uh, sabbatical was nearing the end, he was proposed to cooperate with ZTH. He was a well-known and recognized physicist in Poland and in foreign countries. So these were moral dilemmas associated with the choice. Life offered the choice. May 47, Mieczysław Wolfka dies of heart attack and he was buried in Zurich. Let's return to Warsaw Division. The first head, Czesław Białobrzeski, mid-picture, Consecutive, Wojciech Rubinowicz, his terms of office, 1947-49. Ladies and gentlemen, Wojciech Rubinowicz, as we know it, was an outstanding scientist in two optics. Sommerfeld Bohr were his outstanding teachers. He was a Lviv Technical University and Lviv University professor. He came from Lviv. I believe that my colleagues will be speaking about Professor Rubinowicz. The international recognition was gained on diffraction theories and other fundamental issues into optics theory. His uh, students uh, also have remarkable achievements. He was the distinguished member of the Polish Physical Society and also the honorary uh, president. He uh, is considered to be the initiator of uh, physical com uh, physics competition that many distinguished physicists participated in. The next uh, president in the period 1940 
Profesor Sosnowski miał również dużo osiągnięcia. Profesor Sosnowski uh, had uh, lots of individual achievements. He was uh, an exceptional lecturer, which uh, I experienced myself listening to his inspiring lectures. Reconstruction of uh, the buildings of the Department of Physics, it was uh, destroyed during the war and it was reconstructed in 1951. This is what it looked like at the beginning of the century and uh, the current view in the photo on the right hand side. So we have now reached uh, the moment when uh, the controversial 1950s arrived. Uh, until 1956, there were lots of uh, controversial events. In the center of Warsaw adapted to the spirits of that time, and lots of new centers of physics were established. Unfortunately, many Many pre-war structures were uh, closed down because they were considered to be uh, obsolete and not matching the current requirements. The Polish Academy of Sciences was established and it turned out to be the institution supreme over scientific societies, including Polish physical. Society. The role and independence of the Polish Physical Society was limited. Its activity was limited to knowledge uh, dissemination. Since 1955, uh, for five years, no single meeting or congress of the Polish Physical Society was uh, organized. Uh, as time went by, the situation stabilized. There were some good Good moments. Uh, the Institute uh, of Physics of the Polish Academy of Science was uh, established. Uh, initially, it was chaired by uh, Pienkowski, then uh, Sosnowski took over. Bardzo się zasłużył dla rozwoju tej. Who also contributed to the development of. Uh, this uh, institute. Furthermore, the Institute of uh, Physical Chemistry of the Polish Academy of Sciences was established, and uh, in 1955, the Institute of Nuclear uh, Research was established uh, with the president, uh, with Andrzej Sotan as the president. The Polish Physical uh, Society um, used the premises of the University of uh, Technology, the Department of Mathematics and Physics uh, was um, the, the, the institution, the organization from which uh, the Polish Physical Society originated. Andrzej Kojetan Wróblewski told me that the names which we formally use nowadays were coined in 1952. Physics, uh, the university uh, had its established form, but the physics in, at the uh, University of Technology was still in search for its framework. Czepan Szczeniowski was the person responsible for the establishment of four independent departments of physics, where physics was uh, 
practiced, but they were also uh, teaching students from different departments of the Warsaw University of Technology. We must not forget Leopold Infeld. He was the president of the Polish Physical Society between 1955 and 1957. Leopold Infeld is, was the founder of the first institute of theoretical physics, which is a um, globally recognized center of theoretical physics. Uh, he organized the famous conference in Jabłonna uh, with the participation of such uh, distinguished physicists as Paul Dirac or Richard Feynman. His students include Ivo Białynicki, Biroa, Professor Andrzej Trautmann, and many others. We can say that he did as much for uh, theoretical physics in Poland as uh, Sosnowski and Pinkowski in experimental physics. Between 1952 and 1955, Włodzimierz Ścisławski was uh, the president of the Polish Physical Society. He was the student of uh, Professor uh, Białobrzewski. He he uh, did internship uh, at Neville Mott. His students uh, in their future career were the managers in the Department of the Applied Physics of the, Poli of the Warsaw University of Technology. Then Zdzisław Wilhelmi took over. Uh, he was the president of the Polish Physical Society between 1955 and 57. He was among the uh, founding fathers of the Institute of Nuclear Science, then he was the chair of the Department of uh, uh, Nuclear Physics. He was also the honorary member of the Polish Physical Society. He uh, fulfilled different roles in international structures and promoted around 50 doctoral dis dissertations. The activity of the Warsaw branch in the 1950s was uh, really significant. Here you can see a list of selected lectures uh, in which uh, Nobel Prize uh, winners participated, uh, just to mention uh, John Cockroft, as well as uh, uh, Josef Rothblatt, who went uh, to England in 1938, and he was uh, awarded the Peace Nobel Prize in 1955. In the 1960s, uh, the country was already on its way towards normal life. Unfortunately, after the anti-Semitic actions in 1968 and after the, um, after the martial law, uh, the organization was redefined. Some uh, centers were reorganized, new centers were established. In 1969, the current Department of Physics was uh, separated from the Department of Mathematics and Physics, whereas 60 years later, the Department of Physics at the Warsaw University of Technology was established. It wouldn't have been possible but for uh, the existence of the Department of uh, Technical Physics and Applied Mathematics. Uh, the Institute of Nuclear uh, Research was uh, redefined after the martial law. Nie sposób powiedzieć kilka słów o Szczepanie Szczeniowskim. Proszę Państwa, jest to postać wyjątkowa. I would now like to mention uh, Szczepan Szczeniowski, who is uh, a distinguished personality for the Polish, in the Polish Physical Society. Był uczniem Pieńkowskiego, a więc zaczynał w Warszawie. Pieńkowski used to be his teacher. Then he worked uh, in Wyf, Wilnius after the war in Poznań, and finally 
back in Warsaw, where his last project involved the establishment of the Institute of Physics of the Warsaw University of Technology. In 1979, Jan Petykiewicz, Jan Petykiewicz became the chair. He was the student of Wojciech Rubinowicz. Proszę Państwa, w 1981 roku został wybrany w pierwszych demokratycznych podziałach w wyborach dziekanem wydziału w Teams. Później była reelekcjonalna w tym kadencji, ale został odwołany z tej kadencji z powodów politycznych, ponieważ wspierał swoich studentów, ponieważ nie zbierał swoich studentów. Marian Grinberg became the president of the Polish Physical Society in 1985. For many years, he held the function of the head of the Department of Solid Physics. He was also the chair of the organizing committee of the 30th Assembly of the Polish Physical Society in Warsaw in 1985. It was held in the auditorium maximum at the university. Kilka wybranych wykładów. Iwo Białnicki Birula poświęcił wykład. There were several lectures delivered. For instance, Ryszard Gajewski talked about i żywo dyskutowanym temacie zimnych. The controversial topic of the cold fusion. Andrzej Kajtan Wróblewski. W takim słynnym warszawskim liceum. Mentioned the curriculum of teaching physics in the famous secondary school in in Warsaw. There was also a lecture on supernova. Łukasz Turski, Wojciech Gawlik, Marcin Levenstein, Marcin Heller, and Tomasz Dietl also delivered their their lectures. In it happened in September 1988. Do premiera Tadeusza Mazowieckiego telegram poparcia dla jego. Participants of the assembly sent a message to Tadeusz Mazowiecki to support his mission as the Prime Minister of Poland. Irenaus Szałkowski used to be the president of the Polish Physical Society between 1991 and 1995. Then he was also the member of the European Physical Society. He supported students and scientists in their trips abroad. During his term of office, our logo was developed. It was regularly published in each issue of the progress in physics. Here you can see the list of the presidents of the Polish Physical Society of the Warsaw Branch, then they often became the Polish Physical Society presidents. The list is not exhaustive, certainly. Proszę Państwa, no i dochodzimy do ostatniego rozdziału. Pierwsze dwudziestolecie nowego wieku. A dzisiejsze obrazy kiedyś jeszcze bardziej bogaty. Teraz jest listy dotyczących pierwszego dwudziestolecia. You can see the list of the presidents of the Warsaw branch of the Polish Physical Society. There are around 30 of them. Perhaps the list is not exhaustive because we may have some missing names. As far as the branches of the Polish Physical Society, it is devoted to the physics of fundamental influences, optics, and nuclear physics. Fifteen years ago, the 38th assembly of the Polish physicists was held. I had the pleasure to co-organize it with my colleagues. It was the year of physics, the global year of physics. It celebrated 
Centennial anniversary of Einstein's publication of the papers which changed uh, physics. Two of them were devoted to the theory of real, uh, relativity. One was the interpretation of the photoelectric phenomenon, another to the phenomenon of uh, diffusion. And the fifth one was about uh, determining the sizes of molecules. Some occasional uh, lectures Michał Heller, Paweł Góra. Were uh, delivered uh, during the assembly by Andrzej Wróblewski, Michał Heller, Paweł Góra, Jerzy Jurkiewicz, Marian Krawczyk, and Sensua Bajlik. And Jan Zilic was, was awarded with the Marian Smolkowski medal. Ryszard Tanaś was the winner of the Wojciech Rubinowicz Award, while Tomasz Dietl delivered uh, the lecture on nanospintronics, which was related to uh, him being awarded with the prestigious uh, Agile and Technology Physics Award. The honorary guest was Klaus von Klitzing, who discovered Hall's quantum effect. You might remember that Wojciech Kilar, the distinguished composer, uh, composed uh, a symphony, uh, which is called Symphonia de Motu. And he dedicated it to the Polish physicists. It was first presented during the 38th Assembly of Physicists. Wiesław Kamiński, who is with us, certainly remembers this commemorative uh, board. Uh, it was uh, prepared on the occasion of the uh, on the occasion of the anniversary of establishing the physical society. Last year. Obchodziliśmy też okrągłą rocznicę we celebrated uh, the anniversary of establishing the Warsaw uh, Physical Society, which uh, was then transformed into the Warsaw branch of the Polish Physical Society. The lecture was delivered by Andrzej Kajetan Rublewski. Uh, it was devoted to the history of the Polish Physical Society. And then it was also delivered during the uh, assembly uh, in, uh, in Krakow. Here you can see uh, uh, the list of the, the number of uh, the members of the Warsaw branch of the Polish Physical Society, but the members who do not pay their fees are not included. Initially, this number was uh, bigger, but most probably all the registered members were taken into consideration. And uh, last but not least, uh, time to uh, conclude. The Warsaw branch of the Polish Physical Society, uh, which witnessed the wars, crises, uh, the development and uh, uh, death of many political parties and systems, survived 100 years being faithful to its ideas. We do hope that the coronavirus will, in, will not destroy our society. Thank you. Very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for this exquisite presentation. Not only was it focused on the history of Warsaw's division, but whole Polish physic, uh, physical society. By the very nature of it, it could not have been the one delivered by Professor Wróblewski, who was supposed to present the whole structure of the Polish physical society and its history. But this one was an exhaustive one. Thank you very much indeed. We've got a moment for questions. We open the floor for Q&A. Are there any questions? I just want to say that Professor Wróblewski 
made us used to the fact that there is a surprise at his lecture, and he was getting a surprise ready for today's morning. We don't know what kind of surprise that is going to be. He keeps us on the tenterhooks, but he's going to tell us what fascinating things that have yet been unknown he discovered. The nearest session of the board of the association is held in December. I hope that Professor recovers by then. It would be splendid to know what the secret is. Returning to this lecture, do the guests have any questions? We may have questions from the platform. No, no, no questions on the platform. Proszę bardzo, Andrzej Wysmołek. Andrzej Wysmołek. The speaker is not using a microphone, therefore we cannot provide the interpretation. We do apologize for any inconveniences. No, rzeczywiście tak było. Yes, indeed, that was the case. In 1916, you may not know that before Poland regained independence, Warsaw, starting 15, was not in the Russian hands. Germans made it possible to operate the university. Choja, the place was not ready. There was the physics department at the university and physics department at the University of Technology, both headed by Professor Kowalski Wierusz. Indeed, they had classes together. So we share the same roots. There is higher education reform. 1919 was when the divisions got separated. Before Hoja building um, was ready, the classes were held here. In the auditorium, the picture you saw, people from outside Warsaw don't know that Koszykowa and Hoja are adjacent streets, so there is all kinds of proximity. Today, there is emotional proximity proximity because the physics department is located in Ochota division in the cutting edge building, but still we keep cooperating. The organization of this assembly is a mutual endeavor. We have joint projects. We can do much more, I believe, but we grow out of the same road. Thank you very much for this comment. Are there any more questions? If there are no questions, thank you very much for this in-depth, exquisite presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say that during the opening ceremony, the Lithuanian Physical Association president sent his wishes, Jozas Witmantis, Ventkus. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the culminating point of the first part of the assembly, the morning session. And now there is the unveiling ceremony for the plaque.
Musimy zacząć. Proszę Państwa, Ladies and gentlemen, a hundred and twenty-three years of partitions and enslavement, 1918 saw the rebirth of Poland. On the way to its independence, Poland experienced many freedom-gaining uprisings, bloodshed. After such a long period of partitions, hardly did we expect that just after a few years after independence regaining would we see active science there is more to that scientific organizations would be created 11th of April 1920 was the date of Polish Physical Association creation the assembly Jure Garbarczyk delivered a wonderful lecture on this it was this very building of Warsaw University Technology 5. Vilnius, Lviv, Krakow, Poznań and Warsaw were the five participating entities with the first president Władysław Natanson. Not numerous group of pretty advanced and eager physicists. Polish Physical Association has grown to advance to have 19 regional divisions and 2,000 employees. The the plaque that we are going to unveil is paying homage and kudos to all those. Thus we organize the 46th Assembly of Polish Physicists. And the Senate of the Republic of Poland established 2020, the year of physics. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to witness the unveiling of the plaques, as Professor Garbaczyk is saying, there is the honorary plaque that was unveiled 10 years ago. This is the physical lab that is not normally available. These are only students that see this during the class. Here, we've got an easily accessible place and we can proudly boast that the Polish Physical Association was established in this beautiful building and this plug makes it even grander. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the honor to unveil the plaque. This is a very symbol that Polish Physical Association and similar are very important. Not only is this work, this is also knowledge dissemination, school education, friendships that continue for many years. This is only passion making your dreams come true and the Polish Physical Association may it help people to make their wishes come true. Ladies and gentlemen, I hereby pronounce the time for a lunch break.
Konsorcjum FAMO zostało otworzone przez najlepsze polskie ośrodki naukowe zajmujące się fizyką atomową, molekularną i optyczną. Stąd bierze się jego nazwa. Konsorcjum FAMO podejmuje wspólnie ambitne, długoterminowe projekty badawcze mogące zmienić rozwój fizyki i technologii nie tylko w Polsce, ale i na świecie. Pozwólcie nam się przedstawić. W laboratorium prowadzimy badania z wykorzystaniem ultrazimnej mieszaniny atomów rubidu i rtęci. Badania te mają na celu lepsze poznanie fundamentów fizyki, na przykład poprzez weryfikację obowiązującego obecnie modelu standardowego. W laboratorium optycznych zegarów atomowych rozwijamy optyczne wzorce częstotliwości które w naszym przypadku są oparte o ultrazimne atomy strontu. Wykorzystujemy je do badań fizyki wykraczającej poza model standardowy oraz, co równie ważne, do metrologii czasu i częstotliwości. W tym laboratorium zajmujemy się inżynierią źródeł pojedynczych fotonów. Takie układy mają zastosowanie nie tylko w badaniach podstawowych, ale także w technologiach, takich jak komunikacja kwantowa. Technologie takie są teraz bardzo intensywnie rozwijane. Testujemy teorię kwantową w skali molekularnej tak dokładnie jak to tylko możliwe. Chcemy wykorzystać nasze niezwykle precyzyjne systemy laserowe, żeby zobaczyć czy coś tam jeszcze jest poza granicami modelu standardowego. Laboratorium ultrazimnych gazów kwantowych na Wydziale Fizyki Uniwersytetu Warszawskiego chłodzimy laserowo atomy cezu i potasu do temperatur poniżej 1 mikrokelwina. Z atomów tych wytworzymy następnie ultrazimne cząsteczki, które będą istotnym elementem przyszłych komputerów kwantowych. W laboratorium procesów ultraszybkich zajmujemy się wykorzystaniem ultrakrótkich, to jest trwających femtosekundy impulsów światła laserowego, do badania dynamiki procesów zachodzących w cząsteczkach organicznych i w innych obiektach mikroświata. W laboratorium fotoniki kwantowej badamy bezstratne przekształcenia pojedynczych fotonów. Staramy się przekształcić pojedyncze fotony, nie niszcząc ich. W naszej grupie skupiamy się na dwóch dziedzinach, fizyce zimnych atomów oraz fotonice. Badane przez nas polarytony plazmonów powierzchniowych z jednej strony pozwalają na precyzyjne manipulowanie ruchem atomów, a z drugiej strony na konstrukcję ultraczułych biosensorów. Zajmujemy się także spektroskopią molekuł dwuatomowych. Nasze badania służą weryfikacji potencjałów dostarczanych nam przez toryt. W tym laboratorium zajmujemy się badaniem centrów barwnych w diamencie, które zachowują się jak takie sztuczne, uwięzione atomy. My wykorzystujemy je do precyzyjnych pomiarów pól elektromagnetycznych i temperatury. Na przykład obecnie koncentrujemy się nad zastosowaniem nanodiamentów w żywych komórkach i prostych układach biologicznych. Ogólnym szyldem, pod którym można by umieścić nasze badania jest magnetometria optyczna. Dzięki niej udało nam się badać pole magnetyczne wytwarzane przez ludzkie serce, czy mierzyć sygnały magnetycznego rezonansu jądrowego ale także manipulować stanem kwantowym atomów, czy poszukiwać cząstek ciemnej materii. W laboratorium badamy za pomocą różnych technik laserowych strukturę wzbudzonych stanów elektronowych w cząsteczkach dwuatomowych. Celem jest badanie występujących oddziaływań, wyznaczenie charakterystycznych parametrów cząsteczkowych oraz zbudowanie odpowiadających im krzywych energii potencjalnej. Nasza grupa prowadzi teoretyczne badania w dziedzinie ultrazimnych gazów. Takie gazy wykazują silne własności kwantowe. W laboratorium fotoniki i techniki światłowodowej zajmujemy się światłowodową synchronizacją sieci piątej generacji oraz światłowodową dystrybucją sygnałów generowanych przez zegary atomowe, w tym najdokładniejsze zegary atomowe rozwijane m.in. w konsorcjum FAMU. W zakładzie fizyki atomowej obserwujemy zderzenia atomów i molekuł. Jest to ważne ze względu na poznanie i oddziaływanie obiektów kwantowych. Czy się Wam spodobało? Jeśli chcecie o nas wiedzieć więcej, odwiedźcie naszą stronę internetową albo jedno z naszych laboratoriów. Zapraszamy.
Szanowni Państwo, mam ogromną przyjemność przewodniczyć sesji popołudniowej. No i oczywiście najpierw muszę spełnić wszystkie zobowiązania w stosunku do osób prowadzących, mianowicie przede wszystkim profesor Wysmołek, że mamy również We have a website that leads you to the meetings and that is business people meeting section that was held today. We are going to have this section open tomorrow. You can talk shop with the company's representatives. It's a very interesting place. It's worth looking into. Whilst walking our extraordinary physicist assembly, this is an exceptional session. Słyszeli o historii fizyki, physics history, z takich opowiadania z różnych stron. Mamy pierwsze, pierwszy będzie pan profesor Józef Szudy from different perspectives will be presented. Vilnius and Toruń by Professor Schude, Mr. Adam Kiena, Lviv and Wrocław, the second in the series presentation, this time delivered in an online channel. Before that, before these two, we've got a nice surprise for you. Professor Jurek Garbarczyk will be joining us. He's going to give you an insight into this exciting thing. Jurek, the floor is yours. Proszę Państwa, niespodzianka. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the surprise. Andrzej Kajetan Wroblewski wrote a book. It's going to be a bestseller. History of physics in Poland. Jednakże nie ukaże się w tym momencie. It was supposed to be out for our assembly. They are not going to publish it now, but I hope this year. This is the book cover. Profesor Wróblewski was working long on it. The cover is like history of physics in the world. Many of you already have the book. To jest coś, co będziemy czytać. This is a must read. It's going to take hours to devour the book. Out and available soon. A few words about Mieczysław Wolfke. In 20 or so minutes, we are going to unveil the hologram that presents Mr. Wolfke. Mieczysław Wolfka, the professor of Warsaw University, that has been mentioned on numerous occasions. Some more information before the hologram unveiling. I told you that there were two chairs. Number one and number two, chair of physics number one, was headed by Mieczysław Wolfka. And I told you that he was believed the precursor of holography long before it actually started. I told you what Bohr and Gabor said about his work. I told you that together with Mr. Kassen, they discovered the quantum liquid of helium, the void of viscosity. Wolfke used to work on infrared sensors, cooperated with the army. That was a classified kind of research. This Infrared sensors were being made in the cellar of this building. These infrared sensors reacted to aircraft of the enemy. It was quite an innovative outlook of detectors. Wolfka was also into low temperatures. In 1935, he wanted to create the Low Temperatures Institute, but the war ruined his original plans. Here is a handful of photographs of Wolfka with his cooperators 
from chair number one. The gentleman next to Wolfke in the right-hand side photo might be Józef Roliński, the later head of Warsaw Division, the post-war division. It's an interesting photo. Also, Wolfke in Kamling Honors Lab, Leda Low Temperature Lab. He had lots of interesting ideas. He was thinking about crystallizing helium at the pressure of a hundred atmosphere. Kameling Ones did not agree. The year he died, William Kesson carried out this kind of experiment and he admitted it was Wolfka's idea to crystallize helium at this temperature. This co-discoverer, Kelsen, was the first foreign one that was awarded honorary doctorship of Warsaw University of Technolo Technology. Wolfka developed broad scope networks of scientific contacts. Right hand side, upper picture, Cockroft, future winner of the Nobel Prize, Louis de Broglie visiting Wolfska's lab is the next picture. Louis de Broglie was presented Warsaw University honorary doctorship and seized the occasion to visit Wolfka's lab, as Wolfka was Europe famous physician. The gentleman in the middle is not President Mościcki, as many may think it's Alfred Denisot based in Poznan. Henryk Drozdowski will give you an insight in his presentation. On the left hand side, this is the banquet photograph celebrating August Piclard visit to Warsaw University of Technology. This is the gentleman with bushy hair. Some people take him for Paderewski. There is the rector of the University of Technology, Wolfgang on the left hand side. August Picard was a Swiss, very famous physicist, flights in stratosphere was his specialization. He also emerged in the depths of the sea with a special submarine. The visit of this gentleman was related to the fact that there were balloon external shields he was interested in. Picard used to ride with both his hands, left and right, which came as a surprise. What am I saying this? In 1938, there is Polish Star, a very famous project, to break the height record. There were height records. There were balloon troops in Poland. It was kind of military and sporting achievement. Wolfke was the chair of the Scientific Council. Council. Professor Szczeniowski was on the board. This will be addressed in our colleague's presentation. Professor Mięsowicz Jezewski. The objective was to check uh, cosmic radiation, neutrinos, stratospheric flights, and this is a propaganda balloon, kind of a poster presenting this trip by balloon lifting. Half of the Palace of Culture of Education was the size of the balloon. That was a huge project. Two meters capsule included Jot Konarkiewicz, pre-war physicist, who was also a, an alpinist. Captain Burzyński, great achievements in this kind of flights. They didn't make it. 
because hydrogen caught fire. They were going to repeat the experiment in 1939. It was replaced with helium, but it didn't rise into the skies because the war broke out. H.E. University of Technology and Gdańsk University of Technology, where he was lecturing after the war, because these two have, were not destroyed. He published a number of uh, papers on nuclear bomb. He sensed the uh, time. It was the time of the first trial. Uh, he left for Switzerland, as I was saying in my presentation. He was going through Sweden. Wolfgang was supposed to become familiar with technical physics situation in Western Europe. He exchanged letters with Einstein. I showed you Einstein's letter to Wolfgang. This is the translation of a part. Dear Mr. Wolfgang, I was very happy to have received your letter after such a long break. There is a discussion on uh, radiation quantum. Einstein was quite skeptical towards the idea, but he wrote that you cannot exclude this kind of situation up front. And Wolfgang was offered to lecture at, at the age in Zurich. We need to remember that he was pretty familiar with that city because he was at the and university assistant Lecture, uh, assistant professor lecturer. A very interesting monograph on Wolfke was written by a colleague of ours, Krzysztof Petelczyc. Mieczysław Wolfke, if they had given me half a million, Wolfke was sorry because he's got plethora of ideas taken over by those living in more well-off countries, or he didn't use his ideas, that was the fickle finger of fate. He was sorry about the way science is financed. Ketan Wróblewski had a nice appraisal of the book. The book is available. Krzysztof Patelczyk visited all these places together with Ewelina Kędzierska, co-author of the paper. They were able to discover many unknown facts, and the book contains very interesting elements. Should you like to learn something about further of stage events of uh, Wolfgang's life, outstanding physicist, please contact Krzysztof because the book is a must read. That is all for me, ladies and gentlemen. And I understand that after this introductory word, we can unveil the hologram that has been prepared especially for the occasion. Professor Michał Makowski is the author of the hologram. That's it. Unless you have some questions to me, to Krzysztof Petelczyc, having written the book, he was so amazed with history of physics that he gave a lot of support to the organizing committee of this extraordinary assembly of Polish physicists. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, more classical presentation. 
We shall have Józek Szudy delivering presentation on Polish Physicist Association in Vilnius and Toruń. And I believe you may take off the mask. I'm going to step down. You are going to be one star on the page. Yes, the page. I'm going to pass the microphone, but it needs to be dis disinfectified. Please disinfectify the microphone I'm holding in my hand. Okay. All right. Proszę Państwa, no cóż, cóż. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, unfortunately, uh, our special assembly needs to be held under very special conditions, which emphasizes the unique and exceptional character of this assembly. Right after the first day, I am really fascinated and delighted about all these media solutions. Uh, I do hope that uh, tomorrow and on the following day we will have the same level of uh, service. It's done in a fantastic way. It's definitely not better than in reality, but uh, the virtual presentation cannot be designed in a better way. We owe it to our younger colleagues from Warsaw University of Technology. I'm sorry, I don't know your names. No, krzyknijcie mocniej, jak się nazywacie, to ja przedstawię. If you shout out your names, I could introduce you. I remember shouting at Krzysztof because apart from being a perfect organizer, he tends to be bossy. So if you're bossy at his age, you can only imagine what is going to happen later. Our speaker is ready to deliver his speech. Dzień dobry. Witam wszystkich widzów i słuchaczy. Zacznę może trochę w stylu biblijnym. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin with uh, referencing to the Bible. Initially, there was the chief commander, Józef Piłsudski, who announced the revival of the Vilnius University, uh, which he called the Stefan Batory University, and it was announced on the 28th of August, uh, 1919. It was referenced to the uh, Vilnius Academy established by uh, Stefan Batore in 1579. Later on, in 1803, uh, it was uh, transformed into Vilnius University by uh, Alexander and then closed down by uh, in uh, 1832. Then, at the end of uh, August 1919, Two physicists arrived in Vilnius from Warsaw. It was Vaclav Dziwulski and Józef Patkowski. They established or started establishing the <coughs> Institute of Physics uh, in the building situated on uh, Nowogrodzka Street, which was later called the Jędrzejsniadecki Institute. The first assistants uh, in this uh, institute were Hippolit Piwnikiewicz, Jadwiga Falkowska and Jan Kandenace. These five people were the founding fathers of uh, the Vilnius branch of the Polish Physical Society. The branch was established on the 31st of March 1920. This is when the founding meeting took place. Let me remind you that it took place before 
are the official organizational assembly which took place here uh, on the 11th of April 1920. The president of the branch was Vaclav Dziwolski. There were four physicists from Vilnius participating in the organizing assembly in Warsaw. Vaclav Dziwolski, Józef Patkowski, Vaclav Staszewski and Jadwiga Falkowska. They were the members of a 35, uh, of a group of 35 uh, founders of the Polish Physical Society. Soon afterwards, in spring 1920, there were the first assemblies. The first presentation was delivered by Hippolyte Piwnikiewicz on soft X-rays. The outbreak of uh, the war resulted in breaking the operation of the Vilnius branch for six months. Then the uh, Department of Physics was evacuated in July 1920, first to Warsaw, then to Poznan. Uh, it returned uh, to the original location in December 1920. On the 15th of January 1921, the academic year started. Uh, the year 1921 uh, was rich in meetings and presentations. One of them was delivered by Jadwiga Falkowska on characteristic spectra of X-ray. Uh, then uh, there was a lecture delivered by Stefan Kempisty, who was also the member of the Polish Physical Society. Uh, he talked about the curves which uh, fill a square. Then Wacław Dziewórski delivered a lecture uh, on the 7th of uh, February. Moreover, in 1921, Alexander Tmochowski, who was a teacher of physics, supported by the city of Vilnius, and established the School Laboratory of Natural Sciences. Uh, it was intended to uh, collect some teaching and learning uh, resources, organize classes for students. Um, on physics, chemistry, and biology. Jan Weiserhoff arrived in uh, Vilnius from Krakow in December 1921. I would like to point out that uh, soon afterwards he became the member of the Vilnius uh, board and he contributed to a great revival of its operation. In uh, the um, photo, in, uh, in the top right-hand corner, you can see uh, Patkowski, Staszewski, Weissenhoff, and Dziewulski. The four of them were the founding fathers of the Vilnius University of Technology. Weissenhoff was also a sports person. Uh, Wojtek will tell you more about it. In the photo uh, at the bottom, you can see him as the member of the hockey team uh, of uh, the uh, Academy of Physical Education in Vilnius. 14 meetings of the special university uh, group took place in 1922. It, uh, it was like, um, like a kind of club. Uh, which uh, brought together people interested in uh, physics. Speeches were delivered by such persons as uh, Kondenat, uh, Dziewulski, Patkowski, and Dziewulski, whereas Weisenhoff delivered three lectures. One of them was devoted to Stern and Gerlach's exp uh, experiments. During the second general assembly, during the new term of office in 1923, uh, was again uh, appointed to be the president of the Vilnius branch of the Polish Physical Society. You can see here uh, a person who played a very important role in the period between the wars in Vilnius and the Vilnius region as a, a great enthusiast of new methods of teaching physics. 1923. 
Pojawia się nowe nazwisko. Henryk Niewodniczański. Henryk Niewodniczański, uh, who was then a um, second year student, member of the Polish Physical Society, and also the president of uh, the Mathematics, Physics, and Astronomy Students Club. And he was also appointed as the deputy assistant in the Department of Physics. His first lecture delivered for the Polish Physical Society was about neon lamps and their applications, while the second one was about uh, the time interval between the absorption and emission of light at uh, fluorescence. During the fourth general assembly, Józef Patkowski was um, appointed as uh, the new president, whereas Aleksander Dmochowski became the member. The laboratory, the school laboratory established by Dmochowski uh, was turned into a state-owned uh, institution in 1925 and was managed by um, the educational board of the Vilnius region. Alexander Dmochowski was the head of this laboratory. In uh, 1926, Jan Weisenhoff became the president of the Vilnius branch of the Polish Physical Society, while Dmochowski became the member. Niewodniczański uh, also became a member, and during the third assembly of the Polish physicists in Lviv, he delivered a lecture on the fluorescence of mercury uh, pairs. Dmochowski delivered two lectures, and Staszewski delivered two lectures as well. 1927. Prince of Zapaśnik was the teacher, became the president of the Vilnius branch. Mochowski was also a member of the board, whereas uh, Hrynkiewicz joined uh, the, uh, the team as the new member. Dmochowski, as the head of the school laboratory, started organizing shows for teachers, for students, and for the general public. The first, uh, the first show, the first presentation, was related to uh, the equipment and instruments uh, he constructed on his own, including maximum uh, dynamometers. His initiative was warmly welcomed. In July 1927, the school uh, laboratory was visited by the president of the Republic of Poland, Ignacy Moszczycki, and a special show of uh, physical and chemical experiments was organized for him. In 1928, the Vilnius branch uh, held the fourth assembly of Polish physicists. 172 people participated. The opening lecture was delivered by Władysław Natanson, on uh, the modern undulation mechanics. Uh, unfortunately, Nathanson was uh, ill, so uh, the presentation was delivered by Weisenhoff, who also delivered a speech on new quantum theories. 50, 51 own papers were um, delivered by Niewodniczanski, Dziewulski, Hrynkiewicz, and others. This is a photo of uh, the participants of the fourth assembly of the Polish physicists in Vilnius in 1928. A very important part of the agenda of these um, assemblies were common uh, dinners during which uh, some uh, uh, fun speeches were delivered uh, during the fourth assembly. Uh, such, a, such, a, such a poem was read by Professor Ludwig Ver Wertenstein from the Warsaw branch. It was uh, supposed to resemble the style of the famous Polish romantic poet Mickiewicz. He talked about the old fellow uh, who talked to his um, colleagues uh, who are physicists. He encourages them to read some 
treaties and uh, find quotations uh, that refer to crystals, gases, and liquids that um, he was informed in Vilnius uh, that uh, the assembly of physicists is going to be held. So those of them who uh, are smart and clever should deal with uh, quantum physics. During the General Assembly, the Committee for Establishing the Polish Physical Terminology was um, appointed. Jan Weissenhoff developed uh, the terminology related to mechanical engineering, Mieczysław Jerzewski, electricity and magnetism, and Władysław Kapuściński from Warsaw, the terminology related to uh, uh, optical engineering. On the 15th of June, 1928, the Vilnius branch of the Polish Physical Society uh, had 25 members, including three professors of mathematics, one pro uh, professor of chemistry, one astronomer, and seven teachers of physics. In 1929, on the initiative of the Ministry, um, uh, educational um, the department was established. The organi organizational uh, meeting was held in November 1929. Bronisław Zapaśnik, who was the headmaster of the lower sec uh, secondary school and member of uh, the branch board, emphasized the need for the teachers to associate in professional societies. Here you can see uh, the, the, the cover of the academic book, Principles of Physics, which was uh, modernized by the team of Vilnius physicists, Dziewulski, Patkowski, Staszewski, and Weisenhoff. The volume was devoted to general physics, dynamic properties of matter, and acoustics. Uh, the, the publication was initiated by the Vilnius branch, whereas its uh, publication was uh, funded by uh, Josef Mianowski Fund. The publication was welcomed warmly by uh, the members of the Polish Physical Society. And consequently, the team was encouraged to publish the second volume on heat energy and particle physics. In 1930, there, there was um, an initiative to disseminate uh, physics. Bronisław Zapaśnik organized public shows of the Foucault pendulum in uh, the auditorium of the lower secondary school in Vilnius. This uh, show, this presentation was uh, described in periodicals and in magazines, and it was repeated several times. Whereas uh, Professor uh, Władysław Dziewulski wrote in Urania that it was the first uh, Polish show of the experiment carried out by Foucault in Paris in 1851. There were two teachers uh, whose uh, activity was uh, particular um, uh, was particularly intensive, Jan Kowal and Wacław Staszewski. They organized uh, some shows for teachers and lectures with physical experiments for the youth. Both the uh, Vilnius branch of the Polish Physical Society and the School Laboratory of Natural Sciences were very popular and they were considered pioneers in uh, teaching physics in um, mainstream schools, um, both um, lower uh, and upper secondary. An important event was marked by the publication of a quarterly for teachers uh, teaching in secondary school. It was called Physics and Chemistry at School. It was the, the first issue was published on the 1st of October 1932. 1936, Stefan Szczeniowski arrived uh, in Vilnius from Lviv and he became the chair 
um, of the um, Institute of Theoretical Physics. Whereas uh, Jan Wessenhoff became the chair of the Institute of Theoretical Physics at the Jagiellonian University. In January 1937, Acta Physica Polonica and the, um, the office of Acta Physica Polonica moved from Warsaw to Vilnius. Szczeniowski's uh, arrival contributed to revival of the Vilnius branch. He traveled uh, a lot and talked about uh, the project of the first Polish hot air balloon flight. Szczeniowski was a member of the council. Uh, it was supposed to be a month flight, more than 22 kilometers, in order to check the distribution of heights and the, the cosmic radiation intensity. Kobownik, Jerzewski, Ziemecki. Zbigniew Burzyński was supposed to be pilot. He was a record holder on a global scale the Bennett Cup winner. The measurements in the temperature as it is that were supposed to be carried out by Dr. Konstantin Narkiewicz Jotko, who was a cooperator of Zimetsky. Was Weissenhoff left for Krakow? The team expanded to include Szczeniowski to work on the second book of uh, Physics Principles. They finished at the end of 38. In spring 39, the booklet was out, but the whole number disappeared after the second world war. Well, luckily enough, Szczeniowski was able to find the materials included additional corrections and prepared the second for release. It was released in 48. At the break of 37 and 36, 37, the didactic sessions from Vilnius issued a project to create an experimental higher uh, secondary education school for especially gifted young people. It was supported by Mathematics and Physics Department Council and Humanities Department Council and the Senate of USB. It was confirmed by the Minister of Religions and Public Education. It was the national Jan and Jędrzej Śniadeski's high school uh, headed by Mr. Staszewski. There are different divisions, especially in Finland, so a heated discussion on organizing a research institute in Poland, this kind of physical and technical one. There was a special committee appointed whose objective was to prepare uh, the kind of competition. Wacław Dziewulski represented Vilnius alongside with Niewodniczański. At the end of 37, the committee reshaped into the organizing committee that was supposed to give rise to com um, institute creation, headed by Dziewulski. October 37, Patkowski was appointed the head of the higher education department of the Ministry of Public Education. Alexander Jabłoński, cooperator of Pinkowski, was invited to join. This is also picture of Jabłoński. August 38 is when Dziewulski died. He was the head of the organizing committee of the Ninth Assembly of Polish Physicists in Vilnius, held at the break of September and October. Dziewulski joined technical physics uh, into this uh, proceedings. It was the first time they were going to discuss it. He planned to have a discussion on the national 
Technical and Physical Institute. However, his, his death resulted in discontinuation of organization works to create the institute. It was not created until the outbreak of the war. The Ninth Assembly was very much grieving after Jaworski's death. Stefan Pienkowski was elected the chairperson of the Assembly. Five plenary sessions, 200 participants. The didactic session section was pretty uh, active. There was a stormy discussion on the new physics curricula in secondary schools. What the ministry proposed was criticized by the teachers. <coughs> this discussion uh, was unresolved. So they decided to organize in autumn 39 the first ever physics teacher assembly. But it didn't take place because the war broke out. This is a group, a family filter at Piotrskarga, Kucha, and the participants visited Rosa Cementary's uh, grave of Jewelski. And there was an excursion to Vierki at the end. Uh, Vierki is now a part of Vilnius. There was the General Assembly at the 9th session. Stefan Pinkowski was uh, appointed the head for the 38 40 tenths of office. PTF was a clandestine organization. The representative of the Vilnius one had Professor Josef Paczkowski living in Warsaw, being the head of the ministry uh, department, but he didn't return to Vilnius. But he was the Vilnius department member. He never switched to Warsaw. The underground board was involved in organizing help for PTF members. In Vilnius, Stanioski helped. He was responsible for financial grants of the governments and then Kościuszko foundations. The war ended Toron, 1945, July. There was about 200 scientific staff members of Stefan Batory University, including four physicists, Stepan Szczeniowski and th three assistants of Niewoniczeński, Garnisch, Egeniusz Skorko and Wacław Turczyński. Niewodniczeński did not go to Toron. We had Vilnius teachers Staszewski and Jan Kowal, and two students, Andrzej Hrynkiewicz, professor later on, Kazimierz Antonowicz, a professor later on. After four weeks' time, Szczeniowski left Toruń and took Poznan University chair. So there was no physics professor until January 46, when Aleksander Jawolski came to Toruń. He came from Vilnius. But he stayed there only for 18 months. He took the chair of the head uh, of the experimental physics at Copernicus University, 24th. August 45 was the decree when the university was created. He engaged in the creation of the building. It was his idea to create Toron Division. I found it in the archives. It was 47 when Toron PTF Division was created. Jabłoński was the first head. He took part in the discussions mentioned before. It was May 47. It was then the 10th assembly, the first seat of the Toruń division. It was Natural Science uh, College in Sienkiewicza Street. Now the Fine Arts Institute is located in this building. Terms of office finished in 49. So the new board was appointed. It was headed by Professor Jerzy Rajski. Two years later, the third Terms of office. 
With Professor Jan Zewodzki. The stamps of office was discontinued in October 51. The ministry, 52, Deputy Minister Eugenia Krakowska transferred Zewodzki to Wrocław University. Here are the sketches made by Leon Leśmianowicz, a previous dean. Jabłoński, Rajski, Żewuski. The three founders, founding fathers of Toruń Division. In the Stalin period, PTF did not act that swiftly because of politics. Two assemblies were cancelled. PTF was supposed to make physics popular and didactics according to socialist style and Polish Academy of Science was the only institution supposed to organize assemblies. Still, in 1955, the scientific conference in Torun was organized to make review optical questions that are the subject of post-war Poland research and the ways to develop. The idea for this conference was uh, indicated by Mr. Pinikowski. His death resulted in a delay. It was. Uh, Atomic and Molecular Optics Conference in the newly built Collegium Physicum in Toron. The organizer was not PTF officially because it was not allowed, but initiative was taken over by Professor Leonard Sosnowski, Polish Academy of Sciences uh, Institute in Poznań, and the division was not a former organizer, but Professor Jaworski involved all those physicists working there. And they helped in organizing. He was the head of the organizing committee. However, Professor Wojciech Rubinowicz was elected the head of this assembly. And there were theoretical aspects of optics in the presentation. Post October 57, it was November, the only time when physicists had the assembly in November. It was Wrocław, it was the 15th assembly and it was the general assembly that elected the new president professor alexander jabłoński from torun division the main board was composed of three torun physicists jerzy rajski kazimierz andonowicz wanda harusowa deputy president professor ludwig natanson from Łódź. the general assembly obliged toluj division to organized the 16th physicist assembly in 59th September. Before that, in February, there was the gala session of the division to celebrate 35 years of scientific work of uh, Jabłoński, 35 years after he published in Journal the Physics together with Pinkowski. Many people attended the session. Lona Sosnowski and the scientific presentation by Stefan Ternitz on diagrams and triplet state. It was a hot topic back then. 16th physicist assembly in Torun, September, 470 participants, including People's Republic of Germany and Hungary, 10 sections. What was important? The General Assembly resolving to oblige the main board to sponsor the memorial plaque for uh, Michalson and to put it in the place Michalson was born. This is the ceremony. And this is presented here. The unveiling, 4th of September, 1963. It was Michelson's daughter, Dorothy Michelson Stevens. 
who is making a speech here. Here is Jabłoński, and here is Copernicus University director and the mayor of Szelno. He resisted, but he organized it is non nicely. Even the American anthem was played because Dorothy Michelson Stevens was the head of the Corps of Peace coined by Kennedy to provide help for different countries. And she was believed to be an important person. The ambassador of the USA came. A very interesting event. Because I was an assistant lecturer, I was carrying this plaque to Szczelno using a truck. I do remember this day. A few weeks later, end of September, there was the one organized by the division in cooperation with. Uh, the ministry, he was a member of this union at the National Committee of Europe. It was owed to him to have this conference in Torun. Jabłoński was the head of the organizing committee. There are many outstanding people including three, including Alfred Castell, the Nobel Prize winner in the consecutive year, George Porter, Nobel in 67 in chemistry for triplet states. In the context of Jabłoński's diagram, the work has been published in Acta Physica Polonica, special book, and Gerald Hatzberg, the molecular spectroscopy guru. There is a bit of information that I want to give you. Starting the end of the 50s, there is a group of physicists working at the agricultural school in Olsztyn, headed by uh, Professor Regina Drabek. A few later, there was a PTF subdivision that was a part of Toron. There's a number of people that still operate. New division was created in Austin, and they come to meetings with us. The first head of this was uh, Miss Regina Drabent, and there's usually a board member from Austin, 67. Roman Stanisław Ingarden from Wrocław comes to Torun. And there was thermodynamics and radiation theory chair created for him. He switched from Wrocław to Torun. In 1968, Professor Stanisław Brozowski was hosted. Ever since the beginning, he was a member of Torun Division, despite the fact that we lived in Buffalo. He was a member of PTF. In 68, he had a gift for Torun Division. The American publications, annual books, series. He founded a uh, foundation, Mrozowski Scholarly Journals Fund. That was the seed fund for the uh, library, which was officially opened in 72. In Garden, revived the Toro Division. He's got lots of ideas. He wanted to open uh, international paper on mathematical physics. It was bi-monthly uh, publication by the consent of the minister. Every year, they organized symposia together with the editorial team's session. The first was out in February in 70, and symposia are organized every year. June 2019 saw the 50th International Symposium. Because of the plague this year, there was no symposium. In the 70s, there were two all-Poland conferences. Mid-70s, in Garden, was appointed the head of the Committee of History of Physics at the board of PTF. This 
committee worked at UMK main library. First, these were the interviews recorded on a magneto tape, the first interview with Jabłoński. These were published later on in print in physics advancement. Then it was released as a special book. Polish Academy of Capabilities uh, released this, 1977 April, together with Torun Board, the committee organized the first Polish seminar on history of physics, then the second. In 1980, the third, very interesting, diverted to Vitalonian the problems. First before Copernicus, uh, that gained international recognition. He came from Poland. Perspective was the treaty composed of 10 books, Kepler uh, based on this. It was an, ax uh, uh, an annex to Vitalans, Leonardo da Vinci, lots of books, one on perspective in paintings, for example. The team was created and history of science was also there. Headed by Andrzej Bielski, the history of ophthalmology and classical philology. It was translated into Latin. They worked at the Technical and Agricultural Academy. It was headed by Rozwadowski. The main board agreed to create Bydgoszcz division. This division was created at the beginning of 1978. Mikołaj Rozwadowski was the first head. 1976. The 26th Assembly in 86, 700 people. The basic physics research and the universe. It was late motive. Professor Stanislaw Gondowski was the head of the organizing of the committee. The two photos, the then President Wilhelmi delivers a speech, and you can see it in the photo. September 18, 1980, Professor Jabłoński dies. His funeral at Powolski, Professor Jerzy Pniewski pronounced a farewell speech. Jabłoński was strongly attached to PDF. PDF. The 21st assembly, he said that before the outbreak of the Second World War, PTF had a great significance amongst physicists. People were interest-free in working in PTF and they didn't shake off this responsibility because they worked for the good of Poland. On the 100th anniversary of Jabłoński's birthday, there was the national scientific session on Polish physics at the threshold of the third millennium that brought together Lots of people from Poland, including Professor Kosinska Matsukov, as far as I remember, was taking part in this Institute of Physics from Torun and Polish Academy of Science po, uh, Committee of Physics. It was the forum of the deans of physical departments and institute directors. And the seat is now at Adam Mickiewicz University. It was then published in the form of the book, Polish Physics at the Third of the Third Center. Century. International dimension of uh, 100 anniversary, a huge international conference. Jabłoński Centennial Conference on Luminescence and Photophysics. And in consecutive year, there was a seminar, a workshop on atomic influences in laser field headed by Professor Stanisław Chwilut. 2001, 36th 
assembly headed by Andrzej Bielski, 400 participants, morning sessions, afternoon specialized session, poster session, but the greatest attraction was the general presentation ping pong physics delivered by Professor Krzysztof Ernst. The additional attraction was that the phenomena discussed by Ernst were presented by professional table tennis players. This is an example of the match in huge auditorium of University of uh, Nicholas uh, Copernicus, 900-seater was a full house with participants. This is in front of the auditorium. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, now we do have some time for questions. Do our online listeners have any questions? No, I can see there is one person in the audience willing to ask a question. I do understand it was not typical of a woman being so active in physics back in 1928, and I'm wondering what happened to her, what she was dealing with. She was a very interesting person. She took her school living exam in Moscow and she organized the first uh, female scout groups group. It happened during the, the war. Then she arrived in Krakow. She was supposed to write her doctoral thesis there, but she met Władysław Dziewulski, who was uh, the assistant of Professor Wierusz Kowalski. The first physical society was established in Warsaw back then. He persuaded her to move to Vilnius, and she was among the first three lecturers there. In the list of uh, papers published by Vilnius physicists, her, her paper was the first one. Uh, and it was devoted to testing viscosity of liquids. The second paper was uh, written by Weisenhoff. Falakowska worked until 1924, and then she left. I browsed through all the lists of uh, members of the Vilnius University, uh, and then uh, when I was uh, trying to discover more, to learn more about uh, the uh, Scots group, I discovered that she was a very active uh, member of uh, this group of uh, female scouts. <laughs> After the outbreak of the war, she arrived in Warsaw and uh, she died on the 8th of August in the first week of the Warsaw Uprising. That's all I know about her. Thank you very much. We do have one more question. I would like to know whether the fact that uh, the General Association of Teachers of Natural Sciences was established in Torun was related to to, to the fact uh, that uh, there were so many teachers in, the, in these unions. Uh, 
Josefina Turo was the assistant of Professor uh, Antonovich. It was her idea. She also uh, founded a periodical which has been published ever since. When uh, Professor Wilhelmina Ivanovska died, who was the first Polish astrophysicist, she graduated for, from mathematics. Then Professor Dziewulski persuaded her to become an astronomer. She did her uh, doctoral thesis, then she went to Sweden, and after coming back to Torun, it turned out that uh, the Department of uh, Physics and Department of Astrophysics uh, were collaborating so strongly. When Ivanovska died, uh, it was. Uh, it marked the end of a specific era, specific times. People used to used to say that it marked the end of the so-called Vilnius era. Hrynkiewicz, for instance, went to Krakow, but he originated from the Vilnius, uh, Vilnius group. Thank you very much, because this association uh, does a lot for teachers. In your speech, you mentioned the establishment of the Forum of Deans and Rectors. I would like to add that uh, the, uh, the spirit is movements of this forum was uh, Wojciech Nawrocik, the winner of, uh, the, um, of the main prize of this year's uh, assembly. And we, we used to be the deans. Yes, yes, it was back then when we held the meeting of physicists and you were um, meeting in the observatory. Yes, great minds meet in different places and on different occasions. Ladies and gentlemen, next presentation. It is going to be online presentation. Professor Adam Kieyna from Wrocław University will talk about the Polish Physical Society in Lviv and Wrocław. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. In my presentation, I would like to tell you uh, about uh, the people who were related to the operation of the Polish Physical Society in Lviv in the period between the First and the Second World War and after the Second World War in Wrocław. In the, uh, initially, uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, Polish universities associated distinguished physicians. The gaining, regaining of independence in 1919 uh, 19 resulted in the university being renamed as uh, John Casimir University, while the official uh, name of the uh, former university was the Lviv University of Technology. Physics was practiced bo at both universities. At the Department of Mathematics and Physics of uh, John Casimir, there was the Department of Experimental Physics and Theoretical Physics. The Department of uh, or the Institute of Experimental Physics uh, employed uh, Roman Negrosz, who became the chair of the Institute uh, in 1920, uh, and he remained in office until he died in 1926. It was taken over by Stanisław Loria, who is a very important person in uh, the story I'm telling you about. The Institute of Theoretical Physics um, was chaired by Stanisław Loria since 1919. He re 
then he moved to the uh, Institute of Experimental, Experimental Physics in 1927. The biggest number of physicists were associated in the physical uh, institute, institute, institutes of physics at the Lviv University of Technology. This slide describes the three institutes uh, uh, of experimental physics and how they changed uh, in the period between the wars. I named them as uh, Institute of Physics 1, 2, and 3. As I said, they were institutes of experimental physics, and we also had the Institute of uh, theoretical physics, which was uh, General Mechanical Engineering Institute. The professors uh, who worked for the first three institutes were also active members of the Polish Physical Society. The university and technical university were uh, located close to one another in Lviv, and that is why the cooperation of the physicists working at the university and at the tech University of Technology was uh, quite easy. You can also see the uh, Institute of Physics at the university. It is marked as number one in the slide. The Lviv uh, branch of the Polish Physical Society was established on the 25th of January 1921 at the Lviv University of Technology. Professor Tadeusz Godlewski <coughs> was appointed to be the head of this branch, while the deputy head was Stanisław Loria from the John Casimir University. Godlewski participated actively in developing the program and the scope of the society's operation in the period of its development. He was also an active member and the founding father of the Polish Physical Society. When the Lviv branch uh, of the Polish Physical Society was established, uh, it associated 29 members. Tadeusz Godlewski was a distinguished physicist uh, who uh, studied physics, and he was uh, the, the assistant of Professor August Witkowski. Uh, he wrote his doctoral uh, dissertation in chemistry. He traveled to uh, Stockholm. He did internship at Fante Arrhenius. Then he did internship in Montreal uh, uh, with Ernest Rutherford, and he um, carried out research on radioactivity. He became uh, the professor of uh, physics in 1906, uh, and he became the chair of the Institute of Physics at a very, at a very young age. He created the first laboratory for uh, research on radioactivity, and he also his research area included uh, colloidal behavior of radioactive bodies. After the um, outbreak of the war, um, he he worked at the Institute of uh, uh, Radium Research of the Vienna Academy of Sciences. In the period of 1918 and 1919, he was director of the Lviv University of Technology. Godlewski was intoxicated with carbon oxide and he died uh, in 1921, which was the year of the Polish Physical Society's establishment. He only managed to deliver two speeches during the uh, assemblies of the society, but his sudden death uh, broke his scientific career. After his, he died, Professor 
Stanisław Loria became the head of the LVF branch, followed by Tadeusz Malarski, Zygmunt Klemesiewicz, Czesław Ryczyński, Tadeusz Malarski again. Unfortunately, the documentation from subsequent years before the war uh, has not uh, remained, so we don't know who the, the, the heads of the Lviv branch were. Together with the Polish branch of uh, uh, with the branch of the Polish Chemical Society, um, there were different lectures organized devoted to the latest uh, uh, results of research on matter. There were two assemblies of Polish physicists held in Lviv, organized together by the physicists from the University and University of Technology. In July 1921, Stanisław Loria took over the um, Lviv branch. He was also a very active uh, member of the Physical Society. Now I would like to, um, to outline his uh, career. He studied uh, in Krakow and uh, in uh, Lipsk. He completed his uh, studies at Professor August uh, Witkowski. He wrote his uh, doctoral dissertation in 1907, and then he went to Wrocław to do internship with Otton Lumer. He was, his research was devoted to the light dispersion in gas medium. Then he continued his studies in Göttingen and in Berlin, where he focused on uh, Auker's magneto-optic phenomena. He uh, then went again to do internship with Ernest Rutherford at the University of Manchester. He uh, carried out research on radioactivity of uh, elements from the radium and thorium series. Then, uh, in the period 1914-15, uh, he worked at the Institute of Radium Research of the Vienna Academy of Sciences. He became the professor of theoretical physics at the Lviv University in 1919. Continued. Then he stayed at uh, the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena after coming back to to Poland, he was the chair of the Institute of Experimental Physics uh, in 1927. Tadeusz Malarski was, uh, the, was also the head of the Polish Physical Society. He was, uh, he had very high level of education and was very well prepared. He studied uh, both uh, mathematics and physics at the uh, Lviv University. He received the degree of the Doctor of uh, Engineering at the Lviv University of Technology. <coughs> he specialized in uh, physics and chemistry of colloids. In 1927, uh, he became uh, uh, the professor of physics at the Department of Agriculture and Forestry. Zygmunt Kremesiewicz uh, studied at the Department of Philosophy of the Lviv University. He did his internship at Fritz Haber's uh, and dealt with uh, electrochemistry and electrical conductivity in gases. He spent some time uh, in uh, Paris where he uh, worked with uh, uh, Maria Skłodowska Curie. During the war, he worked for the Pasteur's Institute and in a pharma factory. <coughs> 
afterwards he dealt with radioactivity and conductivity of electrolytes. Professor Czesław Raczyński was the next uh, head of the Polish Physical Society. He was the son of, uh, of a, a, a person who was imprisoned in Russia, so he consequently he studied at the university in Kharkiv, then since 1901 in Göttingen. He completed his uh, doctoral studies in 1905. Uh, he was uh, conducting research on recombination of uh, ions in the air. Then he worked for three years in uh, Hereus uh, laboratories in Hanau, where he developed a prototype of high-pressure quartz lamp. After uh, his stay uh, in Hanau, he came back to Kharkiv, where he uh, devoted to research on the absorptive spectrum of uh, molten salts. In 1914, he was uh, conducting research on uh, ta uh, on tunneling uh, rays of gases. He was then asked to come back to Kharkiv in 1916. He became the professor of physics at the Institute of Technology in Kharkiv. <coughs> He came back to Lviv and became the chair of the Institute of Physics at the Department of Chemistry. He cooperated with a number of uh, talented students. An important aspect of the operation of the Polish Physical Society were the assemblies. The third one was held in Lviv in 1926. It was organized by Zygmunt Klemesiewicz from the Lviv University of Technology and Stanislaw Loria from the Jan Kazimir University. There were a lot of uh, participants, over 40 speeches uh, delivered, so the organizers decided to extend the assembly by one day. The opening speech was delivered by Zygmunt Klemensiewicz. <coughs> Many um, papers were delivered by the members of uh, the uh, Institute of Experimental Physics of the Warsaw University. Many of these uh, speeches, many of these papers were devoted to research on non-permanent uh, conditions of atoms and particles. There were only two uh, papers on theoretical physics uh, uh, submitted by Czesław Białowski and Leopold Infeld. It was the first time that the educational section had been organized. Uh, they criticized uh, the curriculum of teaching physics in secondary schools. This photo shows the participants of the third assembly of the Polish physicists in front of the uh, building of the Lviv University of Technology. The eighth uh, assembly of Polish physicists took place in Lviv in 1936. Stanisław Loria was the head of the organizing committee. However, uh, it was organized uh, in cooperation with uh, um, with the staff from both universities. Uh, it included 103 um, lecturers and 78 secondary school teachers. You can see the list of the plenary lectures uh, developed by Szczepan Szczeniowski, Mieczysław Wolfke, Stanisław Brozowski, Andrzej Sautan, and Wojciech Rubinowicz. Other uh, topics uh, were related to uh, nucleus uh, physics, uh, dielectric constant, and photoluminescence. When Poland was uh, attacked by Germany, Polish Physical Society uh, stopped its operation. 
universities were reopened. Uh, after the First World War, the professors of both universities uh, remained uh, in office, but uh, John Casimir University was uh, transferred into the state university. This operation continued until the Germans uh, occupied Lviv. During the German invasion, the academic activity was suspended. In January 1945, the, the lecturers of the Lviv universities decided to establish Polish University in Wrocław. In May 1945, a group uh, chaired by Stanisław Kuczyński arrived in Wrocław. The group was supposed to secure uh, all the resources left by uh, the Germans. He was a deputy of the delegate, Mr. Kuczyński. And uh, he was the first director of the Poznan University. University and technical university work together. Math, physics, chemistry. The institutes of physics and chem chemistry were destroyed during the war. Dorian was the deputy rector. 45-47, the first organizer of physics department. Right after his arrival, he created the one that was transferred into the chair of physics in 45. They brought in in garden. He used to be his student in Lviv. Lviv. He studied in Lviv. Professor in Garden in '45 became a senior assistant at experimental physics chair. '46, '47 theoretical physics chair was not manned. MSc in Garden was the only employee, so Loria took care of this. Once in Garden got a PhD in Warsaw in 49, he was deputy professor and head of theoretical physics chair. The division into the chairs of experimental and theoretical physics was uh, April in '46. <coughs> when Professor Niewodniczanski was employed, he came from Vilnius Batory University. There were two experimental physics chair number one, chaired by Loria, and number two, chaired by Milczanski. As I said, theoretical physics with no head. Stepan Stanioski would come for lectures from Poznan, uh, but he discontinued owing to some of the other obligations. That was theoretical physics history. Next slide, please. The experimental physics development was very difficult. As we said, the Institute of Physics was very well equipped, but then destroyed. 
equipment, places, and sufficient continuous changes in professor's chairs, which made it impossible to continue activity. The situation improved in 46 when Liborz came to Wrocław. He was deputy professor. He was assistant professor at Lviv University. The gas and metal evaporates electrical discharge and pressure it was his main theme. Experimental physics in Wrocław, 40-50, Wrocław University when he engaged into solid body physics experimental practices. He specialized in, next slide please. And Wrocław division created in 47. The first head was Stanisław Loria. Out of 17 members, seven were physicists. The situation changed and improved quickly. In 54, physicists. 93 out of the general number of 74 consecutive heads. Kibbutz Fesowski Ingarden, Żewuski, Maki Ingarden again, Łopuszański Galasiewicz. They retained the original works of theoretical physics. They were also popular science dissemination and lectures. Next slide, please. There were four assemblies of Polish physicists, 15th in 57, 25th September 77, 33rd in September 95, and 44th in September 2017. Next slide, please. From the point of view of this unit, the 15th assembly was of utmost importance. 550 participants, 12 reviews, and a great number of own research presentations. Wrocław physicists brought Cleanery session, Professor Jan Zewuski, who came to Wrocław from Torun in 52, Stanisław Ingarten. The two presentations indicated that there is a strong theoretical section, Professor and Niki Borz, that indicated that there was a great body of achievements. No greater changes, numerous presentations, plenary presentations from Wrocław to Nobel laureates joining this session on research communication was presented in the form of posters. One of post war ones, 40, 16, 2017, 100th anniversary of Marian Smolochowski's death, high scientific level, 30 plenary session, three Nobel Prize laureates, Templeton, Laureate. Not only the most important areas of physics, but also astronomy and philosophy. Open sessions for young people and for children, they generated great interest. It was a great success. Can I have the next slide? 
physicist association created after the First World War in Vilv, and Wrocław contributed towards integration of physical milieus in these units and national scale. It contributed to dissemination of physics in the general public amongst children and young people. Thank you very much for your attention. It was the last accent of this afternoon session. Let's have a break. And evening session starts at 6. Thank you. Nova Era. Iron Lake is, um, is an engineering company which was uh, created in 1985 in the area, in the Grenoble areas. This company was, uh, was created around technology for irradiation by electron beam, so very specific technology. Uh, to give some, some numbers, we have currently 18 people here at Eurolec, and uh, we are working for almost all the synchrotron on, on the planet. So it, it's kind of a, of, a, of a great success for us, <laughs> starting here in Grenoble and, and now uh, providing system to, the, to all the synchrotron uh, worldwide. We used to make uh, mechanics without encoders, and the first encoder we integrated was a ratio encoder. So encoders are used for um, all the motions required for positioning the mirror in, in the environment. We need to sometimes to bend the mirror into shape. To bend the mirror, we, you need to apply force on the mirror. To generate the force, you need actuators, and, and to be sure where the location of the actuators, you use encoders. So. Uh, basically, for one mirror, uh, the, 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 the best accuracy is obtained with uh, two uh, independent actuators for the bending. So you need two encoders per mirror when you have to bend it. The, the total amount of uh, encoders you, you may use for, for this kind of system can be five for the motions and two for the benders per mirror. The environment is, is quite constraining. Uh, you have uh, radiation, you have temperature, you have vacuum. Uh, you move it, so, so there's a lot of things to be able to, to withstand. So. We can use two mirrors, orthogonal to each other, perpendicular to each other. One will focus the beam in one direction and the other will focus the beam in the other direction. This is what, is, what we call the KB system. It's just a geometrical configuration with two mirrors in a row, uh, perpendicular one to each other. 
for the rotation, we need to provide the degrees of freedom, but the range can be very limited. We don't need to make very uh, wide range of rotations. So that's why usually we don't use rotary encoders for this. We use linear encoders installed on very large uh, radius of curvature. So also this is good because we can use linear encoder to control rotation axis. Because it's a specific application, so we have some constraint uh, for the integration. And, and I, I can say that now uh, we are doing this very quickly, so it's very comfortable to, to integrate the head and to align it. Uh, and it was due to the very good interaction between our, our people and the engineer from Renisho. Twoja nowa era.
Ça. Dobry wieczór Państwu. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is the last session in today's uh, session. I would like to give the floor to Professor Wojciech Gawlik from the Jagiellonian University to deliver his speech. Dobry wieczór Państwu. Witam tych, którzy jeszcze... Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would like to welcome those of you who uh, still remain uh, in this room and those who are online. <coughs> physics uh, and the history of physics uh, in Krakow does not date back to the 20th century, but it was established towards the end of the 18th century. It was based in uh, uh, Collegium Physicum at um, St. Anne's Street in Krakow. Then it was developing successfully. Theoretical uh, physics was uh, flourishing. Towards the end of the 19th century, there were two institutes of physics. The great development started when Zygmunt Wróblewski took over. Uh, we all have heard about uh, the great discovery made by uh, uh, Olszewski. Then the tradition of uh, cryogenics development was uh, continued by August Witkowski, who was also the rector of the Jagiellonian University. Then the <coughs> Institute uh, of uh, Theoretical Physics was reactivated and chaired by Władysław Natanson. At the beginning of the 20th century, the Institute of Physics moved to the new uh, renovated uh, building. Then Marian Smoluchowski became the chair of the institute, and in 1917, Konstanty Zakrzewski took over. Professor Natanson and Konstanty Zakrzewski were the pioneers and co-founders of the Polish Physical Society, and I suppose I should start telling uh, the history of the uh, Krakow branch of the Polish Physical Society with them. <coughs> it should also be mentioned that apart from the Jagiellonian University in Krakow, from the beginning of the 20th century, there was uh, the Academy of um, Mining Science, which was uh, established and approved by uh, Franz Joseph. However, it, its opening was delayed until um, the time Poland uh, regained independence and Piłsudski established the new university in Krakow. It was chaired by Jan Stock, who's, uh, with Marian Smolukowski being his supervisor. You can see here the first uh, building uh, of the institute. Now uh, it is uh, the building of the secondary school number four. In April 1920, the Polish Physical Society was established, but it was preceded by some efforts and discussions held between uh, physicists in Poland. The correspondence of uh, the professors from Warsaw with Professor Natanson was uh, mentioned, and it was clearly suggested that uh, Krakow should uh, organize this society. The Polish Physical Society Krakow branch was established in uh, April 1920 with the first chair 
uh, being for the Swafna Tanson. The Kraku branch was established a month later in May. The Krakow branch was established in May 1920, and uh, the first head of this um, branch was uh, Konstant Zakrzewski. He was followed by uh, Jan Stock. And then there is a certain uh, gap in the documentation. I did not manage to find the list of the heads of the branch until 1938 when Jan Weisehoff uh, took this position and he was the last one before the war. The members of the branch were employed in the university in the the Institute Chair of Theoretical Physics, uh, chaired by Professor Natanson, Institute of Experimental Physics, chaired by Konstanty Zakrzewski, as well as Institute of uh, Physics. The, at the AGH University of Technology, chaired by Jan Stock. Although Professor Nathanson was among the most distinguished Polish physicists, he did not manage to, to create, to develop uh, his uh, school. He supervised uh, Stanisław Loria, who operated in Lviv, and uh, Wrocław, and Leopold Infeld, who was uh, one of the most distinguished uh, theoretical physicists in Poland. However, uh, Zakrzewski had a lot of uh, students who later supported the Institute of Physics at the AGH uh, University of Technology. Mieczysław Jerzewski, Ludwik Kozłowski, Marian Mięsowicz and Tadeusz Piech were uh, those who decided to join the ADH, AGH University of Technology after obtaining their doctoral degrees. Many people Many of those who cooperated with Professor Zakrzewski decided to um, to travel and work abroad. Uh, Professor Piekara um, developed uh, an experimental uh, secondary school in uh, Rydzyna, and he also worked in Poznań. Rosenthal cooperated with Bohr in Copenhagen, while Professor Wasowski was a very important um, person for the development of uh, physics in Wrocław. In this photo, you can see. This is a photo which shows the physicists uh, working for the um, Jagiellonian University, Department of Physics. You can see Professor Natanson surrounded by his uh, fellow employees. There are two women, but unfortunately, I didn't manage to uh, identify their names. At the same time, there was uh, a group um, group uh, supervised by uh, Mieczysław Wierzowski and Marian Mięsowicz at the ADH University of Technology. This was uh, um, organized within the Institute of Physics. In 1935, after Professor Natanson died, Jan Weisenhoff arrived in Krakow. He moved there from Vilnius. Apart from being a great scientist, Weisenhoff was also an interesting personality uh, uh, with lots of interests and uh, passions. He uh, adored uh, hockey. Here you can see a photo 
profesor Weissenhoff tworzył drużynę Showing uh, Professor Weissenhoff uh, as uh, uh, Wisła Kraków uh, player. He was also uh, the Polish delegate for uh, Football Association and he was also the author. Nie wiem, czy to jest kwestia baterii, czy był także autorem podręcznika. He was also the author of, um, of a guidebook manual called The Art of uh, Playing Football. For many years, it was uh, the Bible for all football trainers, football coaches. The operation of the branch included uh, organizing the assemblies of uh, scientists, the second assembly of Polish physicists was held in September 1924. It is worth emphasizing that uh, Professor Weisenhoff, according to the reports, uh, delivered a gripping lecture on the theory of relativity in which he uh, presented the fundamentals uh, in such a clear way that uh, nobody would dare to challenge the opinion of, um, of the scientists, uh, such as uh, the one um, made by Professor Zaremba. Professor Weisenhoff uh, managed to explain everything clearly. Here you can see the photo of uh, the participants of the assembly during their trip to Wieliczka Salt Mine. Zofia Miesger in her uh, paper published in uh, Postępy Fizyki uh, identified all the participants. Ten years later, uh, the seventh assembly was organized in Krakow. Uh, Professor Weisenhoff uh, was uh, still dealing with the theory of relativity. It was reported by uh, Wartenstein. In the photo, you can see Weisenhoff delivering a lecture, whereas uh, Professor Wartenstein, in his summary of the uh, assembly, emphasized that it it was like the first attempt to combine theory and experiment. The point was about uh, discovering magnetic dipole uh, radiation. Moreover, Wertenstein emphasized a very interesting uh, participation of the physicists in such areas of uh, life and economy that were uh, and, and engineering which were not able to <laughs> to develop successfully without the adequate and competent ap uh, application of physical methods. As for the mission of the Polish Physical Society, um, it is also to disseminate knowledge. The members of the Krakow branch were the authors of uh, manuals and guidebooks. Um, Professor Zakrzewski published several books, uh, including uh, the one wrote with uh, Natanson, and it was called uh, Teaching Physics. A number of uh, popular science books were also brought out. As uh, previous speakers mentioned, the Polish Physical Society uh, appointed the Commission of Vocabulary chaired by Mieczysław Jerzewski. It happened in 1928. I would like to 
emphasize uh, that Professor Weissenhoff, uh, as part of uh, his activity, was uh, promoting uh, a special word, a special slang word for uh, for the for the mo momentum. Uh, this. This is like a buzzword which is used only in Krakow and nowhere in Poland. The members of the branch were active internationally. Professor Nathanson was um, the delegate of the Union of Physics in Paris, and he was also the deputy president of this union. He was uh, among the he was the first Pole to, to hold this position. I would also like to uh, mention uh, classes uh, on physics uh, held since uh, 1895. These classes uh, became particularly uh, popular when uh, Jan Weissenhoff uh, moved to Krakow. It uh, has been held on Thursdays ever since. Uh, this, these are like discussion classes or discussion sessions. Uh, Leopold Infeld, uh, who was not particularly keen on Nathanson's uh, discussion sessions, uh, emphasized that the classes uh, delivered by Weissenhoff were really interesting. In March 1939, Professor Weissenhoff organized the first Polish discussion session on theoretical physics. It uh, attracted uh, the majority of active uh, physicists in Poland. These were not only theoretical physicists, uh, the group included uh, Arkadiusz Piekara uh, and uh, other personalities whose names you can see in the slide. The discussion sessions uh, turned into a very interesting cycle called Schools of Physics uh, held in Krakow and in Wrocław. In 1939, the autumn uh, was a difficult period of war and uh, the Zonderaktion Krakow, during which 140 people were arrested. They were mainly the professors of the university and uh, AGH University of Technology. Uh, Secret teaching uh, was then organized um, alongside with seminars and discussions. And furthermore, cooperation and assistance between uh, different uh, centers and institutes was flourishing. I would like to emphasize that Professor Versenstein, before he uh, was before he was uh, sent to uh, Budapest, he uh, was um, he was staying in both professors' uh, homes. After the war, the Polish Physical Society in Krakow was reactivated. It was quite early. In February 1945, here you can see the minutes of the first General Assembly of the Krakow branch. You can read that Professor Weissenhoff uh, was appointed as the chair, and we can also see the names of uh, selected members of the branch. Uh, 
faktów, które very important facts that shaped the branch's activity in post-war period was the necessity to return to teaching three expeditions to get uh, scientific apparatuses in Germany were worth mentioning. These were state subsidized Weichhoff, Niewoliczeński, Gierula, Kołodziński and other professors organized three expeditions różnych przyrządów to bring kupić. Tutaj mają Państwo fotografię, którą jeszcze dwa tygodnie temu. A whole array of apparatuses. I took the photos two weeks ago. These still exist and are still used at our university's lecture rooms. A tidbit for you. Oddział posiadał wówczas autonomię finansową. The department had financial autonomy, so they settled the accounts for these, something you cannot imagine today. And the amount that was spent was 50,000 Reichsmark. As of today, $150,000 at today's exchange rate. It was quite a big amount of money that made it possible to rejuvenate classes both at the AG8 University of Technology as well as at the university. First year after the war, Professor Weissenhoff was the vice president of EUPAP and he invited the Committee on Research of uh, Cosmic Radiation to join the conference in 47 and announce the proceedings results. The Commission and the meeting brings together very important personages of the then physics. It is an excellent opportunity for the Polish physicians to restart cooperation with foreign colleagues after many years breaks, uh, a number of photos from this conference. Patrick Blackett talking to Jan Blanet, Wolfgang Heitler talking to Willer. Photos of Blackett, Cecil Powell, who was taking part in the conference, Professor Weissenhoff talking to Pierre Auger. Warto może zwrócić uwagę na to, że it's worth paying attention to the fact that both scientists, both Blackett and Powell, found the conference positive. Cecil Powell dostał także. Cecil Powell was awarded the Nobel Prize two years later. Ten the first post-war years was a great rejuvenation of life in this country. New chairs are being created, theoretical mechanics for Jan Blaton, and the second physics chair for Marian Mięsowicz at the AG8 University of Technology. Cooperators and Professor Niewodliczański come from Vilnius and they take the chair at the second physics chair of Jagiellonian uh, University. People come and go. 48. Zakrzewski. Blaton die this year. The latter suffered an injury in an accident at his outing to Świnica Mountain in May. There was a vacancy. Very important professors were no, no, no longer there. So it kind of disorganized the university because it was looking for those to take on. Professor Stepan Szczeniowski comes from Poznań and lectures for a year. He could not continue this kind of scheme any longer. Szczeniowski decided to step down. 
Therefore, czy jest jakaś metoda na to? Is there any method to use this pointer? Because it keeps jamming. No method. The universities reorganized. Professor Weisenhoff takes care of the theoretical chairs and employs a whole array of new cooperators: Shrenyava, Blaton, Jacek Krajski, Wiesław Czyż. Natomiast profesor Niewodniczański. Niewodliczański defines three areas for the development of experimental physics: atom optics, polar physics, and nuclear physics. And he is into the nuclear one, which later becomes his main passion. The greatest organizational achievement, Niewodniczański, creates a vibrant nuclear physics unit in Krakow and the research institute that turned into a Academy of Sciences Nuclear Physics Institute. Here is a photo where you can see a friendly meeting of Krakow physicists, university. University physicist, better to say, Professor Niewodniczański, Weisenhoff, Professor Szczałkowski, M.A. Szczałkowski at the time, M.S.C., Kunisz, Professor Jarczyk, Professor Kisiel, no, this one is Kisiel, he is Grotowski. Tu jest Leś, Leś, and this is Aleksander Garnesz. Równolegle rozwija się. Simultaneously, there was the development of AGH University of Technology and Physics Department. What I'm showing to you are the cooperators of Niewodniczański Nuclear Physics. The most active cooperator is Andrzej Hrynkiewicz. You can see in the photo his hosting guests, Piotr Kapica, Ilya Frank, Profesor Budzanowski, Grotowski, Strzałkowski, Jarczyk in nuclear physics, body physics, solid body physics, Janik and Hanel. Speaking about nuclear physics, his previous student from Vilnius, Ms. Danuta Konisz. Let me turn your attention to the fact that all collaborators of Niewodniczański were the member of Krakow Division of our society, and they played very important roles in it. I need to speed up. AGH University of Technology was also a very important place for activity of this milieu. Here is a wonderful photo of Krakow physicists reaching the top of the Tatra Mountains. Mięsowicz, Niewodniczański, Weisserhoff, the three main personages. Speaking about this division's activity, Professor Szczeniowski, Professor Weisenhoff, release Acta Physica Polonica until 72, when Professor dies. Acta Physica Polonica is switched to Warsaw, but this is the A mutation, B Krakow. Wiesław Czysz, Staruszkiewicz, and Proszałowicz. In addition to ACTA, 
physical advancement until the death of Professor Weissenhoff, the editor in chief. Post war activities. Starting from the 13th Assembly, it stumbled into lots of difficulties because of political indoctrination, more and more Marxism is introduced. It has been visible in the minutes of this division. We can see the necessity to account for cooperation between scientists and workers. It was by no means nice. We can see remarks. Depart the good attendance. There are many students, although these are lectures for workers. It was a serious problem in '56. <coughs> they were able to free themselves from these lectures, further decades, further presidents. This is how they realized the mission, didactics. Professor Strzałkowski creates affiliated unit in Katowice, the study of physics that became the Silesia University's phys chair of physics. Six hundreds of the university, there is the new seat. This is the Raymonta Institute of Physics. Professor Kunisch pushed to create this one. In the consecutive decades, there are two physicist assemblies. There is a cheeky remark by Professor Jabłoński after 65 assembly. Experimental physics would be very happy if the theoretical ones had a larger representation at the assemblies. Next one, 73. Schools, scientific schools and a lot of gifted people were quite active, so this was indicated in this one. Another the decade, the ceremony of presenting of Smolochowski medal in Collegium Maius at the assembly, and first and foremost, something that was a symbol of the change, August 1980, at the standpoint with regards to the political situation and Polish physicist, Krakow physicist standpoint, the president filed in the Parliament's Committee for Science to no avail because of the further changes. Another one, 93, didactics role and the sad state of it. Coining up the old Poland section of a PTF didactic section, the first chair of it was Dr. Gołąb Mayer. Quite a big activity of the section. There was the photon and neutrino pamphlet at Jagiellonian University, and then involvement into didactics reforms. The meeting with uh, the representative in ministry of ministry in Katowice, and something that that brings the division together and gives it a momentum. Regular sessions and discussion classes on physics with excellent lecturers, Nobel Prize winners, and non-standard forms like 
dedicated exhibitions in cooperation with the library. We've got documents showing, like Professor Niewodniczanski's Jubilee or a way session where we visit Gorz Observatory and the finals of different competitions. We are very happy to celebrate the world physics together with local Philharmonic House. Professor Kulesak was elected the president of Polish Physical Society. We celebrated. 40th Assembly of Polish Physicists, organized by the division together with Przewodniczący Rubę, 90 years of PTF. We organized Krakow Open Air presentation. This attracted thousands of uh, people. Na tym bardzo popularnym trakcie turystycznym. This is a strolling area that hosts thunder of locals and incomers. Then, the anniversary of the university and the new seat in the physics department. Professor Andrzej Warczak was the senior supervisor of this development. Last but not least, 45th Physicists Assembly last year, chaired by Skibinski and Spawek. Here is the photo. Krakow division hosted PTF members for eight times. And this is the threshold of the new millennium, new centenary, so I do apologize for speaking too long. Thank you very much, Professor. History is fascinating. No wonder that Andrzej Kajetan Wróblewski was immersed in this history so much. Are there any questions? We have very few members of the audience, and there are only few people who know how to ask questions online. Widzę, widzę. Panie profesorze, to mówiliśmy o tym w przerwie. Professor, we discussed it during the break, before and right after the war, the Poland, the Polish Physical Society was a very active organization. Recent years showed that the society has been mainly dealing with dissemination of knowledge, and the leading role in setting the directions to follow has uh, disappeared. So, could you? suggest what should be done in order for for it to change well it's you know it's not possible to to reverse the river to make it flow backwards this is not the matter of what is happening in poland only but it's it's a global trend since the the number of physicists uh, uh, is growing there are more scientists more projects and more grants the contacts and uh, and life is uh, diversified and there is no common factor and no strong motivation Based in my experience, I can say that uh, when I was when I was a student and an assistant lecturer, it was very important for me to to have uh, excellent. Uh, quality discussion sessions. I was really happy to uh, participate in such uh, sessions when Professor Mianzowicz was uh, uh, t talking calmly with his deep voice. Uh, the other professors were not uh, in agreement with him. And now we no longer see such situations because the, the mm, 
milieu is uh, dispersed. Those who think that these uh, trends are negative can only mourn on the status quo, but we are not able to uh, reverse the inevitable uh, changes. There are other priorities. There is no in, inner need to discuss things globally because uh, people find it hard to, to discuss various diversified topics, but you know, it's, it's typical of our time. Thank you very much. So uh, let's move on to the next presentation. I would like to give the floor to Professor Henryk Drozowski from the Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznan. He will deliver the next speech. Dziękuję bardzo za zapowiedź. Witam tą wieczorową par, porą wszystkich Państwa zgromadzonych w tej pięknej auli fizyki Politechniki Wrocławskiej i wszystkich tych, którzy nas oglądają online. Państwa, ja myślę, że dobrym wprowadzeniem do tego referatu, postaram się tutaj ściśle to wszystko przedstawić, jest taka wypowiedź Patryka Blaketa, laureata Nagrody Nobla z fizyki. On mówił tak, patrząc na nowe wydarzenia, nie usiłujemy przewidywać przyszłości, zanim nie podjęliśmy trudu, by zrozumieć przeszłość. Tu już było wspomniane, że założone Polskie Towarzystwo Fizyczne 11 kwietnia 1920 roku w Politechnice Warszawskiej pod egidą Władysława Natansona, który wypowiedział pamiętne słowa, mianowicie gorliwie i wiernie służyć narodowi naszemu, przyczynić się do postępu i da Bóg do rozkwitu narodu, spełniać nasz obowiązek względem przyszłych jego pokoleń. Myślę, że ta maksyma w postulatach wciąż jest w naszych sercach. Natomiast nikt nie przewidywał, że wkrótce nadejdzie trudny czas dla naszego kraju. 1920 rok, wojna polsko-bolszewicka, 1926 rok, przewrót majowy i wreszcie hekatomba II wojny światowej. Tu Państwo widzicie w prawym dolnym rogu w stylu neorenesansowym wspaniały budynek naszego uniwersytetu. Dziś mieści się tam rektorat, ale to tu właśnie zaczęła się w Poznaniu fizyka w tym rozumieniu współczesnym. Tak naprawdę uniwersytet nasz ma 101 lat. Tu mogę taki powiedzieć nawet taką osobistą refleksję, że po raz pierwszy od 101 lat rektorem naszego uniwersytetu jest kobieta, pani profesor Bogumiła Kaniewska. Natomiast tradycje akademickie naszego... The uh, academic, uh, uh, the academic buildings are very old because the Lubrańskie Academy was uh, first established and it operated until uh, uh, um, 1870. When the university was established, the Department of Philosophy, including mathematics, uh, natural sciences and humane sciences, and It was also when the Polish, uh, the, po the Poznań branch of the Physical Society was established. It is worth mentioning that in the period 1903-1919 there was the Prussian University, which was called Königliche Academy zu Posen. It was the Royal Academy in uh, Poznań, which educated uh, the teachers. 
I'm talking about that because the material base of the Khan English Academy is opposing was uh, or provided the, ba the base of resources for the Department of Physics and for the Poznan branch of the, po uh, of the Polish Physical Society. Professor Pęczarski was the first head of the po um, uh, Polish Physical Society in Poznan. His uh, term in office was uh, in the period 1924-1928. He was the first uh, person to organize organized uh, the assembly of physicists in Poland. It attracted over 400, uh, uh, over 300 people, and uh, the chair of the assembly was Professor Mieczysław Wolfka. Uh, the assembly. Oh, uh, uh, the assembly uh, lasted three days. Uh, there were different uh, presentations and lectures delivered, but there was also a separate part devoted to theoretical physics. Professor Pentalski uh, studied uh, in Paris, and hence his close cooperation with uh, French physicists, including Jean Perrin. From from Paris. He also um, cooperated with the Physical Society in Prague as well as some centers uh, in, uh, um, in the Czech uh, cities. Here you can see his publication called Contribution de à l'étude de la conductibilité calorifique des solides. Uh, which he published uh, in cooperation with scientists in Poznan. The branch hosted a number of distinguished physicists. In 1927, uh, Paul Langevin uh, delivered a lecture sur les ondes acoustiques. In 1935, Louis de Broglie, who was uh, the Nobel Prize winner for 1929, delivered the lecture La théorie de la mesure en mécanique ondulatoire. And in 1936, Irène Joliot Curie, Les radios éléments naturels. This was um, a prestigious um, meeting. Louis de Broil visited uh, our country to collect uh, honoris causa, a uh, doctor's uh, degree, but he uh, also became the member of our society. In the building, I showed uh, in the first uh, photo uh, the De Broglie was hosted. You can see him, Professor Pancharski, and uh, the rector of the University uh, Rungan. Between 1919 and 1939, the Poznan University uh, included three departments of experimental uh, physics, theoretical physics, and medical uh, physics. You can see the names of their heads in the slide. All these uh, departments uh, were an intrinsic base for the future development of physics in the Poznan branch of the Polish Physical Society and generally of physics in Poznan. Uh, here uh, you can see Pęczarski, De Broglie and Alfred Denison. Alfred Denisot was the head of the Department of Theoretical Physics. According to the materials available in our archives, the professors I mentioned uh, were very much involved in the dissemination of uh, science uh, and their fields. Uh, they participated in different scientific meetings. Uh, 
Here you can see um, some topics of uh, lectures. For instance, by Professor Kalandek, uh, thermal ion emission in halogenite atmospheres, Mosarski on uh, atmospheric air ionization, Chichotsky on mass spectrography, and uh, also uh, Professor Piekara talked about the influence of the magnetic field on um, on uh, magnetic aspects. He also um, carried out some experiments in uh, France. Professor Denisot uh, was the supervisor of the Honoris Causa doctoral dissertation of uh, Josef Piłsudski in 1933. Unfortunately, uh, the personal conflict between the two professors, uh, namely Denisot and uh, Penczalski, had a negative impact on the operation of the Polish Physical Society. It can be a warning for us that uh, such a conflict does not uh, uh, bring profits, but uh, quite to the contrary, it weakens, it deteriorates the whole society. Denisot, who was born in uh, Poznan, uh, decided uh, not to participate in uh, any events organized by Pentarski. After he died in 1937, Niewodniczanski arrived in Poznan and attempted to revive uh, experimental physics in Poznan. Niewodniczanski initiated uh, the first uh, research on uh, nuclear uh, physics. He also uh, managed to bring some equipment uh, to carry out uh, tests and research. Po wróżeniu katedry przez profesora Wacława Dziewielskiego miał objąć z niej pierwsze was uh, supposed to uh, take over the uh, position of the chair, uh, but unfortunately uh, it did not happen. Professor Kalandek was uh, a distinguished personality uh, of the Polish Physical Society of that time. It is uh, not uh, highly known, but uh, Professor Kalandek was the first dean of the medical department uh, of uh, uh, of the Department of uh, Medical Physics uh, at the, the University of Poznan. His uh, manual uh, has been very popular ever since. After the Second World War, our Poznan branch was uh, registered. Professor Szczepan Szczeniowski uh, was responsible uh, for reviving, for restoring uh, the popularity of physics in Poznan. He became the chair of, uh, the, uh, of the Institute of the Jagiellonian University. As a result of um, Edukiewicz's uh, request, he decided to uh, stay in Poznań, despite having a lot of other proposals. After the, se after the Second World War, he was the only professor of physics uh, running a four-year course of uh, experimental and theoretical physics. So he was teaching students uh, uh, in the Department of Physics and Chemistry. We are still astonished by his tremendous achievements uh, in uh, publication and education. Professor Szczerniowski is among the co uh, 
co-discoverers uh, of uh, the phenomenon of electrons on crystals. He was the editor-in-chief uh, of uh, Postante Fizeki in uh, Poznan. It was published uh, in the period 1949-1951. I don't want to sound uh, really formal, but I think that uh, it is uh, a monumental ever consisting of six volumes and still used by our students, a great co combination of theoretical and experimental physics. Z naszego wydziału fizyki profesor Tadeusz Hilczyn. Profesor Hilczyn was also um, involved in uh, the work on this publication. W Poznańskim Towarzystwie Fizycznym działali wybitni profesor. The period uh, of 1949-1956 saw the involvement of distinguished professors such as Czerniowski, Loria and Piekara. Professor Arkadiusz Piekara is mainly known from discovering the phenomenon of reverse the electric saturation in Banzan. In the period between the First and the Second World War, Professor Piekara wrote 54 papers. But we have to say honestly that it was when he was working uh, in Rydzen and uh, on Hoja. He was responsible for founding different um, departments, branches, and he was uh, uh, the, the icon of um, the physical society in Poznań. Marek Kwiek took over the position in 1956. Unfortunately, he died in an airplane disaster. Poznań był też miejscem zorganizowania 26 zjazdu fizyki. Poznań hosted the 26th um, Assembly of Physicists uh, chaired by Professor Rubinowicz in uh, the um, speech delivered during the formal uh, meeting. Professor Jabłoński said, first and foremost, I would like to emphasize that uh, before the outbreak of the Second World War, all Polish physicists assigned great significance to the Polish physical society. I dalej było rzeczą nie do pomyślenia. He also said that uh, no one could imagine refraining or trying to skip work for the Polish Physical Society. Such work was considered as working for the benefit of the Polish science. All uh, uh, researchers in physics were participating in that. Uh, they also attempted and were willing to participate in different meetings and assemblies. W latach 70. odbywało się na terenie spotkania. There were conferences on quantum electronics and non-linear optics held in Poznań. Przewodniczącym tego komitetu organizacyjnego. Chairman of the organizing committee was tego, tego stwierdzenia światowej sławy profesor Stanisław Kielich. The world renowned profesor Stanisław Kielich. Back in the 1970s, 80s and 90s, he was among the most often cited Polish uh, scientists. Taki przykład jednej z takich konferencji. Another example widzimy tematyka elektryczna. Refers to the conference held in the 1970s devoted to quantum electronics, laser technology and its applications, quantum optics and nonlinear optics. Kontynuacja. Then radio spectroscopy and quantum electronics was the continuation of this conference. Tu na zdjęciu górnym jest in the photo.
Hotel. You can see uh, Professor Piekara. This is the photo on top. And uh, Professor Kelly. Franciszek Kaczmarek used to uh, say that uh, when the conferences were held uh, every, other, every two years, Poznan was turning into the center of uh, the world of, sci of science on lasers. Mamy skąd brać jakieś duże wzorce. We, we can consider him a role model. Edycje Latos Hele. To są warsztaty naukowe organizowane od 36 lat, także pod patronatem oddziału Kuzyńskiego PT. Um, for 36 years we have been organizing uh, summer with Helium. Jan Stankowski, Jan Stankowski the late Jan Stankowski, was the spiritus movens of uh, this initiative. Te cenne przedsięwzięcie prowadzi profesor Zbigniew Trybuła. Now Zbigniew Małgorzata Trybuła and his wife Małgorzata took over. Odolanowa przyjechał 130 wykładów. So far, Odolanow hosted 130 lectures, who delivered 365 lectures for 700 students. To właśnie w zeszłym roku było dla uczenia 10 lekcji. Last year. Uh, the death of uh, Professor Stankowski um, was commemorated in a special session. There were five assemblies. As the dates indicated on the beamer. The main organizer of the event was Professor Alina Dudkowiak. Professor Alina Dudkowiak, the then head of Poznan Association, was the chairperson. Now we have 133 full members compared to 97. 129, 64, 83, and my personal reflection to share with you, it's difficult to absorb new people to physical society. It doesn't mean there is no absorption, but it's weak. Myślę, że na zakończenie and to finish off, it's worth saying what was said 100 years ago by Nathan. So the history of each PDF uh, uh, division is the head part of the history of uh, science. As the first president, I love quoting this in different presentations, also targeting at students. Only through history of science do we recognize the science in its fullness, because it shows the difficulties, the dangers, errors, mistakes weaknesses and wobbliness of capabilities. The history of science teaches impartially and patiently what human mind is. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I believe there are no questions from you. Oh, there is one. I'd like to add, Poznań has been famous amongst the Polish teachers every two years, supported by PTF. It organizes life science festival on stage, which brings together about 300 pupils and teachers. And these are magnificent events organized by the member of PTF, Professor Nawrocik. Poznań and PTF are famous for that, for the festivals, life sciences on stage. Thank you very much for adding on that. I didn't put on that. You cannot squeeze everything in. I put some with helium, but Professor Nawrocik is an icon. Thank you for this explanation. Science on Strange, of course, for years. Yeah, it has continued for years, over 20 years. Thank you very much. Today, we have had an extensive review of how active our milliers have been for the last hundred years. A comment referring to what Professor Wysmołek said. 
the significance of Polish uh, association in the mid-war period is important. And another element, contacts between different divisions. Uh, I don't know, Professor Gavlik's remarks are very much to the point. The world has changed. The scientific activity's character has changed, but I don't know whether this fully justifies the fact that contacts between different sections, different divisions are weaker, some kind of grassroots movement, joint seminars, regular ones, would enhance that. Thank you very much. Thank you. One remark. It's premature to congratulate to the organizers of the assembly, but as early as today, Having looked at the first day proceedings, it's worth thanking them, especially the chair of the organizing committee, Professor Wismarek, for I believe heroic endeavor to organize the assembly in conditions of the epidemics era, or era, observing the restrictions that we have to comply with. Thank you very much indeed.